Assalamu alaikum khatina azraat welcome back to the 374th episode of thought behind things today is the 18th of october 2023 aur aaj hamare sath ek bahut hi khaas mehman hai acha personally main jise kehte hain na left wing right wing inko maine thoda sa explore karne ki koshish ki badi anxiety inducing conversations hoti hain main generally ek academic tarz ka aadmi hu mujhe maza aata hai agar data backed baat ho academic baat ho to jab generally religion ki baat hoti hai culture ki baat hoti है खास कर जो ज़्यादा ऐसे एलिमेंट्स हैं जो कि थोड़ा सा लोगों के इमोशंस को राइल अप करते हैं तो मैंने हिस्टोरिकली उसको अवॉइड किया है बट रिसेंटली आई फाउंड समवन जो कि बड़े इंटरेस्टिंग एकेडमिक थ्रेड्स लिख रहा था ऑन ट्विटर एंड आई आस्ट हेम टू कम ऑन द शो एंड ही वॉज ग्रेशियस इनफ टू एक्सेप्ट माई इन्विटेशन वट आई डिड नॉट नो वॉज दैट ही वॉज जस्ट ट्वेंटी ईयर्स ओल्ड एंड आई विल बी वेरी वेरी ऑनेस्ट दिस हैज़ बिन वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंसाइटफुल कॉन्वर्जेशन आई डन इन अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम दिस एन इनक्रेडिबल इनक्रेडिबल अमाउंट ऑफ नॉलेज दैट दिस ट्वेंटी ईयर ओल्ड हैज़ बट मोर दैन द नॉलेज द वे दैट ही वॉज एबल टू आर्टिकुलेट एंड कनेक्ट द डॉट्स अक्रॉस अ लॉट ऑफ मल्टीपल स्ट्रीम्स ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन दैट ही वॉज कंज्यूमिंग हमारे साथ आज मौजूद हैं शेर शाह खान जो कि आई बिलीव सरसी के नाम से ट्विटर पे जाने जाते हैं और आज हमने बात की है लार्जली अराउंड इस्लामिक ट्रेडिशनल हिस्ट्री इस्लाम के बारे में इस्लामिक नेशंस के बारे में नेशन स्टेट्स के बारे में ओवरऑल क्या क्या ऐसे नेरेटिव्स रहे हैं जो कि हम सब मानते हैं जो हम सब बहुत आराम से अपनी ड्राॅइंग रूम कॉन्वर्जेशन में यू नो जिन नेरेटिव को हम यूज़ भी करते हैं जो बहुत सारी पॉडकास्ट में मैंने यूज़ होते सुने हैं उनको उन्होंने आज डेमिकली डी बंक भी किया और उसी के साथ साथ जस्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड के राइज ऑफ वेस्ट किस तरह से हुआ इस्लामिक जो जो एम्पायर्स थे वो किस तरह राइज किए किस तरह कोलेब्स किए क्या ऐसी चीज़ें थी बहुत सारे जैसे सो मच टू बी वेरी ऑनस्ट मैं अगर इनका एक सीरीज भी करूँ ना तो आई थिंक के अगली दस बारह एपिसोड हम कर सकते हैं जस्ट सो मच टू अनपैक हेयर बट जो सबसे मज़ेदार बात है उन्होंने जो भी किया उन्होंने उसको बैक किया विद बुक्स जिसकी हमने लिंक नीचे कॉमेंट सेक्शन में डिस्क्रिप्शन में डाली हुई है सो यू कैन चेक आउट ऑल ऑफ दोज बुक्स एज वेल आप अपनी भी नॉलेज में इजाफा कर सकते हैं और इस कॉन्वर्जेशन का पर्पस कोई गलत सही करना नहीं है इस कॉन्वर्जेशन का लार्जली पर्पस ये है कि अपने हराइजन को ब्रॉडन करना और अगर आप किसी चीज़ से अग्री या डिसएग्री भी करते हैं तो वो बुक्स हैं उन्होंने दी हैं वो कह रहे हैं वो बुक्स पढ़ें और वो जिन एकेडमिक्स ने लिखी हैं उनकी एक बड़ी हिस्ट्री है वो आप सारा का सारा जस्ट इंक्रीज योर नॉलेज एंड एटलीस्ट इंक्रीज द लेवल ऑफ इंटेलेक्ट कलेक्टिवली इन अ सोसाइटी अगर आप इस चैनल पर नए हैं तो सब्सक्राइब करना मत भूलिएगा अगर आप पुराने हैं तो वीडियो को लाइक करना मत भूलिएगा इससे हमारे एलग्रेजम को बड़ा फायदा होता है अगर आपके कोई थाट्स हैं तो कॉमेंट सेक्शन में जरूर आके बताएं आई लिसन टू ऑल ऑफ दैम आई रीड ऑल ऑफ दैम एंड इट रिली हेल्प मी इंप्रूव द क्वालिटी ऑफ कॉन्वर्जेशन अगर आप ओवरसीज पाकिस्तानी हैं तो नीचे दी गई हुई लिंक के ऊपर आप हमें सपोर्ट कर सकते हैं टू हेल्प अस स्टे इंडिपेंडेंट फॉर एज लॉन्ग एज पॉसिबल बट एनी वेज दिस इज शेर शाह खान ऑन टी बी टी इस्लामाबाद स्टूडियो now it's part of well the far is not part of kpk but a uh, kp but um it's like an agency you mm. know far okay. federal administrative tribal uh, heck it, uh, how how big is it um uh, if you were to compare it to let's say some other part of pakistan so it, so the so the south waziristan or ek hai mm. north waziristan okay. right so this ye ek hai lekin big bas sirf is tarah directions mein hai right ki ek south hai ek north hai uh, but it is quite big like matlab does it have like multiple Jersey. villages towns yeah, yeah exactly multiple villages uh, cities even okay. so meran shah is like the center Where were you originally based? Um, Miransha. Acha, you were Miransha. Yes. Yes. Uh, and what were you guys doing there? Like, what was? And this is was this was your ancestral home? Like, your family yeah, have yeah. always lived here. Dunia bhar mein technology bahut evolve kar chuki hai. Ab ab ghar baate ek mobile phone se puri dunia mein kisi kisam ki bhi different assets, stocks, ya even cryptocurrencies khareed sakte hain. Jahan par ye technological evolution aaye, wahan pe bhi unfortunately halat aise hain ki economy ek aisi jagah par pahunchi hui hai ki bade aajkal bure halat hain, inflation. 
بہت زیادہ بڑھ رہی ہے سیونگز ہماری ڈپلیٹ ہو رہی ہیں زیادہ تر لوگ انویسٹمنٹس کرتے ہی نہیں اور جو کرتے بھی ہیں وہ نائنٹی پرسینٹ لاسز انفارچونیٹلی بناتے ہیں اسی پرابلم کو سالو کر رہا ہے سرمایہ ڈاٹ پی کے جو کہ اپنے فائنینشیل ٹریڈنگ پلیٹفارمس پہ ٹریننگس بھی آفر کرتا ہے اور ڈیٹا بھی آفر کرتا ہے جس سے آپ پوری دنیا کی مارکیٹس خاص کر پاکستانی مارکیٹس کو بآسانی دیکھ سکتے ہیں اگر آپ لوگ اپنی انویسٹمنٹس اور ٹریڈنگ میں اسٹرگل کر رہے ہیں تو ڈیفینیٹلی ارج یو ٹو چیک آؤٹ سرمایہ فائنینشیل پلیٹفارم اٹس اے ریمارکیبل پلیس جہاں پر آپ کو بہت انٹرسٹنگ یو نو رپورٹس کے تھرو ڈیٹا بھی ملتا ہے انویسٹمنٹ کی ایڈوائز بھی ملتی ہے اور خاص کر ان کی ٹریننگس جہاں پر ان کے ایکسپرٹس جو ہیں وہ آپ کو کرپٹو اور اسٹاک مارکیٹ اور کموڈیٹیز اور ایسٹس کے اندر ٹریڈ کر کے پیسے کمانا سکھاتے ہیں سو چیک آؤٹ دا پلیٹفارم اینڈ چیک آؤٹ دا ٹریننگس ناؤ بیک ٹو دا پوڈ کاسٹ یس مائی گریٹ گرینڈ فادر اینڈ ہیز فادر سو وی آل لائک وی ہیو بین لونگ ٹائم اینڈ واٹ ہیو یو گائز بین ڈوئنگ اوور دیر ٹریڈنگ سو مائی So my great grandfather was a congressman. He was part okay. of all international uh, national congress. Right. Um and um since then matlab we just have been living so and my father was a teacher in local school. Um but obviously after I think in 2008 and 9 uh jab situation zara kharab ho gayi because of the civil war there. Uh phir hame Peshawar move karna pada for my studies. So you were I mean what 6 7 when you moved? Yeah. Do you have any memories of uh I mean, for those who don't know, he's 20 years old. This is, that part fascinates me. Um, there are very few um, up till 20 year old that I've had on the show. Because my job is not about me, I'm talking about my children. So I'm a big benchmark. And I've spoken to him two minutes and I was like, you're solid. Um, you guys are going to be pleasantly surprised as well. But um, do you have any memories of 6, 7 kids in the age of the Waziristan? Yeah, I have. Uh, fond memories actually so what was it like because so, for a lot of and I'll give you context for a lot of Pakistanis yeah, yeah. they know Waziristan as the place where the drone strikes are yeah this, I'm sorry I'm stereotyping that is what that, that's the reality and we haven't humanized that land enough mm-hmm. so if you can give me an image of what, what, what it was like what living there was like yeah so uh, okay, uh, on the point of droning uh, Waziristan became the capital of drone strikes uh, you know a, a while back Uh, but um, so Waziristan is a beautiful place. Uh, I think before, um, so when my father, you know, when he was a child, uh, when he was a kid growing up, so the image that we got, uh, it's a very peaceful place, just like any other human village or society. Uh, but obviously, I think the uh, Afghan Soviet war, because of that, we you know, a influx of Afghan refugees entered uh, Waziristan and Pakistan as well. So things became unstable at that time. But after that, there were like, you know, decades of stability and peace. Uh, even at the time of my father when he was growing up, there were no such situations. But obviously after, even I don't think after 9-11 directly, like things started to go wrong. Mm-hmm. But um, I think after 2004 and 5, after that, the situation you know, became a became little, a little, little violent. And in 2008, when we had to move, we had to leave Waziristan because right. studies were concerned. Tha. My father was a local teacher in mm-hmm. uh, school, uh, Tochi Public School. And at that time, you know, suicide bombings were in the schools. Pa. So uh, my father was like, you know, his education is necessary. So we had to move to Peshawar for my studies. And uh, so, so I spoke to someone recently um, and, and he was from Bajor. Um, mm-hmm. And he spoke about how, again, the context or the lack thereof of the fact that this tribal ایجنسیز تھیں جو کہ انہیرنٹلی ٹرائبل تھیں سو یو از لائک لسن لائک بفور اس کیرنگ ان ٹو کے پی وی ہیڈ اے ویری اسٹرانگ ٹرائبل سسٹم آف جسٹس آف پولیسنگ آف دس آف دیٹ اینڈ یو نو فار اے لاٹ آف ادر پیپل دیٹ مے بی ان سیولائزڈ بٹ وی ور فیئرلی ایفیشنٹ ان آور ویز ڈو یو ریمبر اینی ڈفرینس ان دا وے دیٹ دیٹ پلیس واز گورنڈ جابی ریسنٹلی وہ ہوئی ہے سو آئی تھنک آئی کین آلسو سی دا سیم تھنگ اباؤٹ وزیرستان وہاں کی جو ٹرائبس ہیں دے آر ویری اسٹرانگ اور دے ہیو اے ڈیموکریٹک سسٹم ایز ویل رائٹ جہاں پہ لوگ آتے ہیں دے ایکچولی ڈیبیٹ اباؤٹ تھنگس تو آئی ووڈ ایکچولی اگری ود دس وہاں پر مطلب وہاں پر آئی تھنک پولیس یا ججز یا کورٹس اس کا اس طرح وہ نہیں ہے آئی ڈونٹ تھنک آج بھی ہے وہاں پر مطلب اس زمانے تو اس زمانے میں تو بالکل نہیں تھے لائک اٹ واز جسٹ پیپل اور سو دس از کل یو نو لائک اے ٹاپ ڈاؤن سوشل آڈر سوری باٹم اپ سوشل آڈر رائٹ سو باٹم اپ سوشل آڈر اس طرح ہے کہ پیپل سو 
we're not, we're social creatures right mm-hmm. we uh, so in group versus out group ka concept hai ki you are more likely to cooperate with people with whom you have similarities right right um per is tarah so because for tribes mein everyone was related to the other person to usme jo cooperation thi collaboration ya market places mein people were like fairly uh, you know jo public order thi wahan par it was fairly maintained peaceful thi yeah, peace exactly, was very much there exactly uh, right. and for that you don't need a police or is tarah uski hame zarurat nahi thi right. people were trading without any sort of you know top down structure like police or judges or courts so uh, i think that uh, this is the case with any tribal society any like all all over the world right right so that's how i think things were governed back then hmm. um but uh, i haven't been to azay san recently right like in from what i remember and from matlab uh, uh, when my father was a kid i think is tarah ki the tribes tribes used to you know, they they would maintain a public order in mm. public spaces like markets for gara gara so there wasn't any need of you know having a top down social structure you know that that imposes laws on people uh but may, we can talk about the top down and bottom up later on of course that's one of the things of course so you came to peshawar in 2009 yes. uh, where did you start studying at the time um so i went I actually started studying started studying after like 2 3 months actually okay. lekin us waqt bahut problems thi like ek to ye ke to acha pashto mein pe dialects different hai right if you right. are from waziristan hmm. um if you are from waziristan uska jo dialect hai that's very different than the peshawari dialect right right to mujhe to peshawari pashto bhi bahut matlab mushkil se samajh aati thi us time pe acha ha bahut difference hai usme it nahi hai but like wo jo pronunciation hai words ki usme hai like sha kha ya is tarah right to aur urdu ki matlab i didn't understand urdu acha you didn't know urdu at all no aur matlab tribal area mein there is no urdu nobody is speaking urdu jo elders hote hain unko you know people who would be sometimes travel to peshawar ya lahore islamabad unko kuch to conversation urdu aati hai ha thodi thodi si wohi bilkul like it's all broken Like, right. Okay. Like, so when I arrived in Peshawar, I was in forward model school. It's in uh, Peshawar. So now, mujhe Peshawari, Peshawari Pashto aati thi, na Urdu aati thi, and people were talking Urdu and Pashto, and I was like, where am I? Or English to bilkul nahi. Wo to baat mein. So it was, yeah. Or I didn't u- know how to use, like, how to write diary as well. You know, the school diary jo thi, mm-hmm. ke homework. I was like, what is a homework? I wasn't used to homeworks as well. क्योंकि वहाँ पर बिकॉज माई फादर वॉज देर सो आई प्रिवेज एज वेल तो आई वुड स्पेंड मोस्ट ऑफ माई टाइम यू नो इन कैंटीन लाइक ईटिंग समथिंग या जस्ट रनिंग अराउंड विद माई फ्रेंड्स तो नाउ इज लाइक वेल आई हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ होमवर्क नाउ लाइक एंड एंड पीपल आई कैन यू एन यू नो अंडरस्टैंड वट पीपल आर सेंग तो या बट आई ऑल्सो फेल द टेस्ट एज वेल जब मैं स्कूल के लिए अप्लाई करा था लेकिन फिर माई फादर टोल द स्कूल के यू नो हीज हीज अ ब्राइट केट ही कैन डू समथिंग फिर जब वो मिड टर्म का एग्जाम आया आई गॉट एटी नाइन Uh, because my mother was very concerned about my education she was like hey, you have to pass this because wo keh rahe the ki after if you don't pass it then we won't get you give you right. admission do you think so, you you're a you're a bright student now all after all that has been said and done well what do you mean bright student i mean so how was your metric how was your inter how was oh it was good it was it was great my parents were happy everyone my uh, my entire family was happy with my result right uh but we can talk more about education because i that's what i disagree with the way that education usually is so okay. if you mean a bright student on the basis of your education system not the score right so uh-huh. so i feel like the, the the system is largely driven by scores yeah. um and scores do not necessarily mean ke critical thinking and um, problem solving and design thinking aa rahi hai bachche mein wo bas ye aa rahi hai ki yaar jo cheeze likhi hai wo bas reproduce kar sakta hai Um, but tell me, what do you think about that? Uh, what was your experience? And this was the uh, KP board that you gave. Yes, KP right. Board. So, so what was that like? The uh, metric thing, like or just the general education. But the overall system. Okay. But, you um, know, okay. What you you mentioned, you have disagreements with it, right? Yeah, so, yeah, what yeah. disagreements do you okay. have? Okay. So, there's a good book. Uh, it's called um, uh, The Death of Expertise by uh, Tom Nicholas. I highly recommend this. Those men who say that so chapter three is about high school and in uh, universities and colleges in the U.S. But I think it perfectly applies to Pakistan as well. Those men who say that on chapter three he says that today's modern day education, which yeah, he was talking about the U.S., uh, it's it's more about training than education, right? So basically, you have to train someone. to you know understand so for example uh, if you go to computer science if you, if you're doing computer science in bs right mm-hmm. it's more about training you how to code you how to you know the, the way that we understand educate the way that we used to understand education traditionally like for thousands of years like wisdom maturity that this you know that understanding of definition has faded away from the public discourse so it's more about training and i think pakistan maybe it's it's just training uh, it, it is training but like the worst kind of right so right. 
Yeah, that's and, the- and which is fascinating because we're in the age of AI where hard skills and hard trainings will uh, become uh, obsolete very, very rapidly. Yeah. Um, and you really need to understand the fundamentals, the core fundamentals, which you said, that you wisdom as a thing or problem solving. If you have problem solving, then you can apply it in any place and apply it you can begin to find your path out. But if you have put a rat, then the minute you're stuck, you're stuck, you are looking for someone else to now show you the way as it's been developed yeah. uh, again. Um, do you read a lot? Oh, yeah, that's, I read a lot. Like, all, Two, three, three, four hours a day. Like, if whenever I, whenever I have the time, I open a book. How did you come about this habit? Okay, so uh, so I was uh, as I was talking about the whole Edwards College experience, right? Um, I had to, you know, because one per environment asata, you know, it was the first time I got, you know, introduced to intellectual activities. So because I'm an introvert, I felt like uh, I did or was had a dost right? Aapasme. So I felt like a, you know. Uh, I had this arrogance type, you know, I, I should differentiate myself. But after that, um, like I said, one thing that I noticed was everybody was like almost the same thing. They believed the same thing, etc. But in that one person who talked about it, specifically if it was a girl who said something, then I, you, you can expect all the boys in the society to just agree with it or just like speak it verbatim. Uh, and I, because I was already, I found myself on the opposite spectrum. I was like, you know what, I, just, I should just oppose it. So, but so, so, we, so we got into a lot of debates at that time, like intense debates. Later on, they got a bit personal as well. So usme, I was like, look, I need some ammunition. I need some information. I need some facts. Right. So I had to resort to books. I started book reading. Uh, this was like 2020. Or when the pandemic, you know, when that happened, that literally changed the world uh, for me as well. And initially, I was very happy because, like I said, I'm an introvert. I like to stay at home. So I just focused on book reading mm-hmm. or many uh, second year like 12th grade ke baad, I didn't apply for any university because I wasn't sure what, what should I do okay uh, gap year liya uske baad, to I took many courses on psychology I thought maybe I should go for law um, um, so I think it was that process when I was learning and reading and then it almost became a habit like later right. on. A couple of things you, know. you mentioned because early on you mentioned off camera and I'd like for you to repeat that but you mentioned that yeah. you um, you went to Edward College, yes. and there was a there was a there was a uniqueness in the discourse that you experienced. Yeah, tell me about that. Right. So um, again, this was the first time where I was introduced to discussions on things that I never thought about, like God or religion. Um, so I I don't know why, but I found that very interesting. So mm. I joined this English Literary Society, um, or usme. Uh, you know, people were so. Usme har month a book club hota tha, right? So uske baare mein baat karte So I think there was this one book by Edgar Allan Poe. Mm-hmm. So and acha one thing that I've noticed about book clubs, uh, I don't know. This is gonna be a little controversial. I think the most unproductive thing on the planet is a book club, because and I've been to so many times uh, to uh, to so many book clubs. Usme hota yeh ki people are never talking about the book. Okay. People just join these book clubs to share what they you know what they think. About about anything about like life if, about anything. yeah exactly anything. So it's the, it's whole, rather a social activity rather than a yeah, actual yeah. intellectual yeah, activity. Yeah. yeah, it's it's people rarely talk about the book, its content. Most people join their like they jo join karte hain, wo unne book padi nahi hoti. That's right. something that I don't know how <laughs> thing is, thang, things are in Islam, but when Peshawar, that's that's the rule. So, khair, like they they would have so they had this book club on you know Edgar Allan Poe. And then they were talking about totally different things like God and, and religion and, right. you know, and morality, etc. So, so this was the first time I was introduced to these debates and discussions. So the thing that I noticed in that environment was that um, everyone just agreed. Like they, 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 they were sort of like minions, like you know, just like minions, ek ke hai, like same color, vagara, vagara. they talk the same thing. So I was a bit, you know, uh, shocked, surprised as well, because I, I imagined, ke, you know what, this is the place where you can expect people who would have the wildest ideas. Right. But the ideas were pretty like far away from what, you know, which made imagination. Thi, but they were exactly the same thing. Like everyone right. was a nihilist slash, you know, religion is there to oppress you slash morality doesn't exist, etc, etc. Existentialist. Right. Oh, that's a big thing. Existentialism. <laughs> like they will read one book by Albert Camus. 
the stranger وغيره and then they feel like they have cracked the code on life or morality so that was something that i i found really uh, interesting at the beginning but mm. because i found myself on the opposite side i was like you know what i'm just going to oppose them mm. so my initial like the way that i began things was that i was it was just like a bias right it wasn't genuine uh, search for knowledge but later on it actually became you know a genuine search for knowledge uh, because i wasn't happy with with my own you know activities ke make it up i'm just trying to oppose people right mm. so i became quite dis- uh, dissatisfied with that and this happened during covid jab everything was locked down and oh my gap year me tha or i was just like at home and just reading and thinking so hmm. uh, yeah that was the moment of crisis how do people take i mean you mentioned ke largely in a particular educated class of a society yeah. ideas are beginning to converge of very interesting observation if a girl would say it, the social yeah. order would dictate ke yeah. chup karke just agree with yeah. her and this is fascinating i can really revert back to my own high school and university experience and mm-hmm. begin to see a lot of shifts yeah um but then you came in and you had a set of different ideas and or you played the devil's advocate yeah. uh, just for the heck of it yeah. um how would they react when you would uh uh-huh. give a counter argument i would be, i would be bombarded by just like shouts and, like not shouts in a in a very disrespectful way but like people who genuinely wanted to say something to me okay, hey this is where you you're actually wrong right. like religiously wrong right so th- that was it. but i actually enjoyed the whole thing like when i was like on the on the opposite side alone so because for a lot of people i mean pakistan a lot of people have different ideas sometimes yeah. people have them within their houses sometimes yeah. they're they're very scared to to voice those ideas yeah. um and again this could be on any end of the sort of political spectrum um but hota ye hai ke jab aap jaate ho ja ke aajkal ke environment mein when it's very emotionally charged up yeah when you do share a seemingly controversial opinion um you're immediately labeled and put into boxes and you're yeah. a- immediately like things are attached to you mm. that have absolutely nothing to do with you right so for example mm-hmm. you 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 have a conversation on um western values versus eastern values yep and you talk about how there is a lot of honor and a lot of history and a lot of respect in eastern values and and you believe that they hold like they're incredible in their own right um but suddenly aapko kaha jayega ki yaar aap to aap propaganda mein phase pade ho aap jo hai wo aap aapki taise log hi terrorism phailate hain yeah, yeah. you know like you're, you're put into these boxes where yeah. you're just like wait a minute like baat kya ho rahi hai tum exactly. itni shallow baat kar rahe ho mere se aake yeah. time ke upar um and then honestly like many life may phir i stopped having conversations start i would love to have debates but over time i stopped having conversations because i just feel like uh, most people tend to think on a very shallow level jo mm-hmm. ma- mainstream talking points hain wo uske around ghumenge aapko dabbe mein dalenge they will mm-hmm. either decide whether you're an ally or a, uh-huh. or an yeah. enemy yeah, yeah. um and then you just feel like yeah is it really worth it mm-hmm. um so i'm trying to understand did you feel that sort of a um ostracization or pushback yeah at the very least they gave you the space to be able to mm. be, ah. be comfortable voicing your opinions um i wouldn't say ke i wouldn't say that um so people weren't conscious of their own ideas that's one thing that i noticed unko pata nahi tha ki wo kya argue kar rahe the you know i so i mentioned this book right uh, the death of expertise um to usme so so let's let's talk about one thing so there's something called education right or uh, there's something called knowledge right so knowledge wo hai when you spend like, i don't know years or months you know studying one thing with intention and focus um and by the end of it you feel like you've internalized knowledge right you, you feel that you can actually talk about this you know in a very calm and you know uh, interest uh, polite way then there's pseudo knowledge right so imagine you read one um popular science book about evolution right to so masla hai ki you feel like you have cracked the code on evolution even if this book is written by an academic on the subject right because you read this one book 
uh, it's a popular science book. You feel you feel like you have cracked the code on things, and now you feel like you can actually talk about this and debate about this passionately. Or popular books may perisara. I'm just giving one example of, of pseudo knowledge, right? Because it's related to you know why our uh, environment is. Because I think it's actually a global phenomenon as well. That in just environment we have, when we share ideas, it's always charged. It's always uh, like you said, emotional. And when you share a different opinion, it's you know we usually fe- you know face ostracism. That you know let's not invite X person to this. So its reason is pseudo knowledge. Because we read we uh, read a couple of articles, a couple of books, uh, so, you know, which are popular. Hai, Uh, and we don't spend a lot of time understanding our own ideas uski wajah se you know we have this feeling that we have achieved something we actually talk about it but in reality there is actually nothing of substance there so i think what i noticed in everest college was that a lot of uh, and i don't want to you know just uh, you know uh, say anything about edwards college one of the students was very good i think i really they gave me the opportunity to talk you know about these things but i think this uh, this is a global phenomenon as well okay people are actually not aware of what they're arguing for or just arguments ko wo passionately advocate advocate karte hain they don't even know like the intricate details of it they they, they feel like they've cracked the code and that's all because of you know the popular science books so i think the death of expertise um it's an interesting book it actually you know dice like it so the death of expertise okay, why we are losing respect for you know experts you know or ek book hai uh, which is also related to this one it's called the disenchantment of secular discourse by steven smith he's a he's a uh, legal scholar and i think he describes this in detail okay mm-hmm. public jo discourse hai he he talks about the us but i think it's a global phenomenon right now mm-hmm. ke jo um, discourse hai about any any topic uski jo quality hai value hai it has degraded mm. and that's why we are just you know always we've always find ourselves you know on the opposite sides mm. you know where we are emotionally and you know just debating with one another right and instead of just understanding the other point of view what do you think so agar main isko aap ko ke do minute ke liye apne aap ko side pe rakhe or try to understand this landscape do you think the 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 quality of discourse has reduced or do you think that people have lived in ignorance for so long and because they have most very very recently suddenly give been given the opportunity to to consume knowledge on a on a on a grand scale yeah okay uh, the chaos that we see around us is largely because again mai isme hamesha hawala deta hu i'm sorry mai bar bar iska hawala deta hu uh, there's a excellent uh, <laughs> study by uh, uh, two psychologists done in kruger effect ke naam se wo hai aur wo it's a graph like this that basically says ke jab aapko yahan par confidence hota hai yahan pe competence hoti hai jab thodi si competence aati hai to confidence bahut high ho jata hai fir wo confidence jaise increase hoti hai to fir suddenly aapka wo dip karta hai this is called mount of mount of stupidity uh-huh. then there is the dip which where this confidence dip ho jata hai competence thodi badh jati hai aur wo value of despair hota hai uh-huh. basically that's why you realize ki wo the world is so full of knowledge uh-huh. uh, ke jo early on when i went on and i read a couple of things and i thought i know everything तो कोई सीन ही नहीं था मेरा और मैं तो पूरी जिंदगी भी करता रहा तो आई विल नेवर हैव इनफ नॉलेज बिकॉज नॉलेज इज जस्ट इनफिनिट एंड देन उसके बाद स्लोप ऑफ सस्टेनेबिलिटी आती है जिसमें आप बेसिकली आहिस्ता आहिस्ता इनलाइटन होते हो और वो ये आपके अंदर पेशेंस आता जाता है आपके अंदर ह्यूमिलिटी आती जाती है एंड यू फाइंड सच पीपल हु आर इनक्रेडिबल एकेडेमिक्स बट दे विल नेवर से दिस इज दंसर टू योर क्वेश्चन से एज पर माई अंडरस्टैंडिंग this is what i can make out of it because they always know okay at any given time in history the the person who is speaking will only know up to what he knows at that point and in uh-huh. the future there will be new data that is going yes. to that may switch or change the current understanding of things yeah. um so within that context if i were to ask you okay how do you see the the overall matlab mere mujhe ye lag raha hai ki pehle log ignorant the completely yeah उनको इस वक्त थ्रू द एडवेंट ऑफ इंटरनेट सडनली एक्सेस टू नॉलेज आई है सो वॉट यू आर सींग नाउ इज माउंट स्टूपिडिटी के ऊपर ग्रोथ बहुत ज़्यादा जिसमें पीपल आर जस्ट सडनली पहले होता था कि पूरी पूरी जिंदगी गुजार लेते थे इग्नोरेंट एंड देवल एक्सेप्ट द फैक्ट देर इग्नोरेंट कॉन्फिडेंस बड़ा कम होता था वो कहते हमसे कोई स्मार्ट आदमी है वो बहुत स्मार्ट है ओके अब उनको थोड़ी थोड़ी नॉलेज मिली और उन्होंने कहा ओ माई गॉड हमें तो ये बताया गया था एक्चुअल में तो ये है और कॉन्फिडेंस बहुत बहुत आए और उस पर फिर बिकॉज दिस ग्राफ एग्जिस्ट एज एज ए ह्यूमन एवोल्यूशन बट आई फील लाइक ह्यूमन द वे दैट ह्यूमन इवॉल्व जनरली गिव यू वेरी गुड इन साइट ऑन हाउ सोसाइटीज वेल इवॉल्व एज वेल एंड सो 
मुझे पर्सनली ये लगता है कि जो ये जो ये हाइपर पोलराइजेशन का जो इस वक्त करंट हमारा क्लाइमेट है ये मे बी दस बारह पंद्रह साल का मैक्सिमम साइकिल रह गए एंड एंड वी आर नाउ गोइंग टू गो टूवर्ड्स अ साइकिल वेयर देयर इज़ गोइंग टू बी मैसिव डिस्पेयर वेयर पीपल वेल सडनली रियलाइज के ओह शेट हमें तो कोई आइडिया ही नहीं है हमें तो बेवकूफ़ बनाया गया है या इनफ नॉलेज हमारे पास है ही नहीं um what do you think so um so let's talk about two, two things right i, mm. I think that ye jo uh, like the um the problems that we are facing right now with regards to you know jo hamar public discourse hai right where we find ourselves to be the opposite sides um i don't think it's only limited to the internet i think you can even you know jo hamari universities hai right which give degrees um i think they also play the same role with regards to uh, i think democratization of knowledge in general has you know somewhat damaged expertise right um but um i just want like focus on one thing so jo narratives hum sunte aa rahe hain about islamic intellectual tradition right to wo you know jo sabse jo dominant narrative i think aaj public discourse mein hai and this actually shock you wo ye hai ke uh, it's the decline narrative acha so so decline narrative char hai right abhi to first wo ye hai the classical one ke al ghazali wrote a book It's called the Half of the Philosopher, or the Incoherence of Philosophers, and that led to uh, basically the end of rationality and the end of science in the Muslim world. Or we say that he said that math is the work of the devil. Right now, this is something that is widespread in the educated class. Like I've been to universities and colleges, and this is when whenever I talk about Al Ghazali, um, they tell me that well, wasn't it, wasn't he the guy who said that math math is the work of the devil? Right. Uh, interesting enough, I think a lot of the liberal voices in our country, like the dominant, they they also you know basically believe in the same thing, and they they actually propagate the same thing. 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 They you know western academia ya muslim academia jo hai about the islamic intellectual tradition no serious academic argues about this mm like none like ye jo narrative hai this is not even a competing theory it's a flat earth theory mm. so imagine you go to a group of physicists and you tell them ke you know what here's my book i believe that the earth is flat they they, they won't even they will just laugh at you right so when it comes to this whole al ghazali uh, jo उनको जो एंटेगोनिस्ट बनाया बनाया गया है दैट्स लाइक अ फ्लैट अर्थ यूर एंड वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ फ्लैट अर्थर्स इन पाकिस्तान अनफॉर्चुनेटली तो अगेन इफ यू पीपल आर इंटरेस्टेड देखना एक्शली लुक अप तो एक आर्टिकल है द वेस्टर्न रिसेप्शन ऑफ अल गजाली फ्राम दिलेवन टू दवेंटी सेंचुरी बाई फ्रेंक रिफल फ्रेंक रिफल इज एन अथॉरिटी ऑन अल गजाली तो उनकी किताब भी है अल गजाली के बारे में अल गजाली द फिलोसॉफिकल थियोलॉजी ऑफ अल गजाली तो वी वेल कैन रीड दिस लाइक ही ये जो क्लेम है कि ही सेट के मैथ इज द वर्क ऑफ द डेवल दैट्स it's not there i say it does just does not exist it does not exist so it's just manufactured out of thin air it's just out of it's it's just like out of nowhere uh-huh. so or ek aur example another anecdote right? before we go further yeah. just sort of just to build um the foundations yeah. right for the average consumer na um jab wo dimag mein uska tha na philosopher acha main bilkul ab dumb down karne lagunga because i know that because you so what happens is when you are surrounded by a certain level of discourse so aap you you surround yourself with wo aapki level up hote jate hain na so aap shayad level 10 pe pahunch chuke hain um and majority of the people are sitting at level 0 yeah. um but then they look at level 10 either yours or the other sides and um that's when they begin to really get confused and so i want uh-huh. to what i do okay. want to do is i want to elevate them to level 1 and 2 and so on okay जब हम फिलोसफर्स की बात करते हैं तो हमारे दिमाग में ना एरिस्टोटल आता है प्लाटो yeah. um, आता है और इस तरह के सारे आते हैं और जनरली अच्छा शायद दो साल पहले तक तो फिलोसफर्स को पाकिस्तान में ज़्यादा सोचा भी नहीं जाता समझा भी नहीं जाता था बस हमें सुना हुआ था अरस्तु प्लतून राइट एंड दैट्स दैट्स द एक्सटेंट ऑफ इट एंड देन देर आर सर्टन पीपल हु स्टार्टेड टू एक्सप्लोर दिस um and then they became hugely popular on social media mm-hmm. and so now they're mainstreaming a lot of these sort of legacy philosophers yeah uh jo ke uh, you know jin ke bare mein hum karte hain so if i were to ask you islamic intellectual tradition ke andar who are some of the people that you would say you know these people were philosophers of their time and they have had uh, a lot of sway in the way that we have evolved uh-huh. um 
who are some of the people that you would find as 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 you know people that we need to be looking up to people that we need to be studying people that mm-hmm. we need to be kyunki main na badi dafa ye baat karta hu ki look i am i'm open to all opinions but particularly when you're talking about let's say eastern versus west western uh when you're talking about islam versus otherwise when you're talking about um morality or ethics or whatever as long as you've really gone through all aspects of all thoughts mm-hmm. your argument will always be tone deaf on some level right so if you uh-huh. okay. if you preach islam without having understood comparative religions it's fairly difficult for you to argue with non muslims um mm-hmm. in a logical substantial manner mm-hmm. and the same thing with philosophy as well um it's very easy to say you know allama iqbal to i mean you know xyz the al ghazali was abc but the real voice kya kahe ke unhone jo ye baat ki thi uske around you know so yeah. it has to be diverse mm-hmm. so for for folks who are interested yeah who are some of the western philosophers that you studied and you feel like you know acha ye main 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 hai aur inko dekhna chahiye and who are some of the eastern philosophers uh, jinko aap keh sakte hain particularly in the islamic world as well yeah so i mean i started my philosophy journey with bertrand russell and wittgenstein so i would say wittgenstein was the one that i recommend to everyone or i'm recently reading about leibniz so leibniz and newton had a very interesting history if someone is you know want to know more about it um they basically accused uh, so N- newton accused leibniz of you know okay you have stole my work right on calculus don't any calculus independently ki thi right. that's established like in us zamane mein they got into pretty uh, controversy um so Le- i would say leibniz wittgenstein and russell these are the people that uh, i don't agree in everything they say but like jo many padhi hain so russell was definitely like the starting point because russell is everywhere in i think in pakistan i think usually people usually buy his book the conquest of happiness which you can actually buy for like 400 rupees on As online in, it's uh, uh, what's what's it about uh, well it's matlab he's a he talks about ki, you know why people are sad right so the first i think the first chapter is k why people are so, something along the lines so he talks about okay, how can we navigate it mm-hmm. uh, so the conquest of happiness is a it's not a very good, like solid philosophical work if you're actually interested in this work you you should read um, you know an outline of philosophy as a beginner i started with an outline of philosophy by burton russell um, then later on i took uh, i i wanted to read wittgenstein's tractatus logico philosophicus it's it's one of the hardest books in philosophy uh, and that's why i didn't understand anything so i had to take a, like a course on it वो आई थिंक तीन चार घंटे की कोर्स थी बेसिकली विच डिकन्स्ट्रक्स द इंटायर बुक उसमें सेवन प्रोपोजिशन है बेसिकली लाइक और आई थिंक इट्स ओन लाइक सेवेंटी पेजेस और समथिंग बट इट्स सुपर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड और लाइबनेस इज द रिसेंट वन बट इन द इस्लामिक ट्रेडिशन देर मतलब देर आर सो मेनी नेम्स दर आई कैन गिव यू first of all al-ghazali uh, actually i want people to read ibn sina as well like ibn sina uh, people usually think uh, ibn sina was a mu'tazilite he wasn't what does that mean so Ma- sorry, mu'tazila is just one uh, islamic theolo- it was a one islamic theological sect okay it has died out but okay. it was quite prevalent there and what uh, was the thought behind that sect um so they did not for example they didn't believe in uh, ahadis they didn't believe okay. they actually uh, so there was a huge debate between free will and, and predestination okay so they were like free will they were on the side of free will like in um but the the way that they have but they have there is a lot of mis- misunderstanding about mu'tazilite as well matlab i think aajkal pakistan mein log kehte hain ki they were like liberal atheist secular some types mm. but they weren't actually mm. um aur dusra uh, so i want people to read al ghazali and ibn sina right just to mm. you know taaki taaki jo misconceptions hai wo khatam ho jaye aur al razi fakhruddin al razi i think he's a if i had to make a list of like top 10 uh, you know genius minds fakhruddin al razi definitely would be there on 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 that list aur uske baad there's another philosopher uh, philosopher, philosopher slash, slash theologian iske bare mein bahut bahut si misconception hai it's called uh, his name is ibn taymiya to ek book hai jo mai recommend kar, uh, karunga it's called uh, ibn taymiya on reason and revelation by karl sharif it's recently published it's free access so you can people can uh, look it up so i think he is also a great thinker uh, he is considered to be one of the most systematic thinkers in islamic history aur bahut sare hain like the reason ke we don't know about muslim philosophers or theologian is because like i said the, the decline narrative you know the classic decline narrative ke after al ghazali philosophy basically died out you know so al ghazali died in 1111 ad right or even someone like ibn tamiya or fakhruddin al razi they came later on lekin 
or, or because of this perception that after Allah Azali there was nothing, that's why abhi jo recent discoveries ho rahi hai, recent understanding of uh, the, the uh, tradition, wo, it's very really recent and they're like we're barely scratching the surface. So one thing for the audience, I just like to say one thing, that Islamic jo intellectual tradition hai for like 12-1300 years, unko hum do hissu mein divide karte hai, right? The first is the first part is classical, classical period. So that is up until the time of Al Ghazali. Al Ghazali was the last classical philosopher, yeah, theologian, whatever. Okay, we'll talk about what this philosopher concept. Why is it going to be talked about? And after that, like from the 12th century, uh, the 12th century to the 19th, 18th century, tuk, that's the post-classical tradition, right? So, like I said, we're barely scratching the surface. What post-classical tradition means? What happened? Because the perception was that after Ghazali, everything died out. That's why nobody cared about it. But now, in the past three, four decades, this has like the tides have turned. Or uh, that's why there's a consensus, uh, consensus now that after Al Ghazali there was a flourishing philosophical tradition in the Muslim world. Um, so, uh, so if you if you're interested about the how the form, the post classical tradition was formed, but its formation case, there's a good book. It's called uh, the Formation of Post Classical Philosophy in Islam by Frank Griffel. Mm. It was published in 2020, so it's a recent. Like I said, it's a recent work. Right. So if if you guys are interested, you can like definitely check. What it out. What does that talk about? It talks about that after Al Ghazali, there were four philosophical uh, projects. One was by Al Ghazali. The other one was uh, uh, Yahya Suharwardi. The third was uh, Abu Barakat Al Baghdadi, and the fourth one was you know the the genius Fakhad Al Razi. Right. So these were the four philosophical trends that uh, basically emerged after Al Ghazali. After, because of the interaction between Al Ghazali and Ibn Sina, which was the collision, then the four philosophical projects emerged. Hui. In the Eastern region, we're not talking about the Western region. Right. In the Western region, you have Islamic Spain and North Africa. Right. The Eastern region, you have the Arab lands, Persia, Central Asia, South Asia. That's, that's the Eastern region. So in the Eastern region, there were four philosophical projects hui, immediately after Al Ghazali. So achha, abhi recently, I think just a month or two ago, Another book was published. Mm-hmm. It's called The Ayers of Avicenna. Ibn Sina is known as Avicenna in the West. So right. The Ayers of Avicenna is by Professor Peter Adamson. Uh, we follow each other on Twitter as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's one of the good things on Twitter. Okay, you get to talk to a lot of scholars. So right. he recently published it. It's like 800 pages. Right. And it only talks about the 12th and the 13th century. So there's a, the point that I just that I want to like bring home is that there was a flourishing intellectual tradition up until the 18th and 19th century. So what happened at the 18th and 19th century? Okay, Actually, I was thinking we will we'll, uh, talk about the other narratives as well, but we can just focus on oh. the 18th century. Uh, let's, let's go with the other narratives as well then, okay. first. We'll, so we'll the come first, back to 18th and the 19th. Okay. So, so the first, again, the flat earth theory, okay? Hmm. The, the, the flat earth version. Okay, you know, Al-Ghazali wrote a book and that's why everything ended. It didn't. Hmm. Uh, and no, like no, the, 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 the source of this misinformation right. is, like I said, popular YouTubers, right? Uh, yeah, bloggers, yeah, non-expert authors like someone like you know Dr. Hudbai. Uh, I think in Pakistan he has been a, a voice for that. He has uh, he wrote a book in 1991 about this, ke, you know, Islam and science, the fight for rationality or something. Prof- Dr. Hudbai has been um, reached out by many academics, like Professor uh, Professor Jamil Rajab actually sent him emails. Mm. Ke, you know what? Uh, we can actually have a discussion on this. It's not something that is true, but he didn't respond. Uh, maybe he did, I don't know, but he said, okay, I sent him an email. Um, there are other voices as well in Pakistan, but this is, um, but like, they're, they're all flat earthers at the end of the day. So no academics believes about this. The other narrative is that Baghdad, you know, the, the whole Betel Hikmah thing, the house of wisdom, Mongolian and everything right out. That's what happened, yeah, that's also flat earth, it, it didn't happen. So, because, like, just think about it, just think about it, it makes no sense. So. Baghdad was the only place where people thought, like, <laughs> just sat down, you know what? Okay, wh- why, why, what is life, right? Yeah. So it wasn't. And here's the thing, uske baare mein jo romanticized jo version hume portray ki jata hai YouTube videos mein ke, Mongol destroyed one lakh people or, you know, everything was burned, jo darya tha, it became black because of the ink. That's not true. That's just fairy tales. Um, Baghdad wasn't even, even a, as badly hit as the uh, Central Asian and Persian cities, mm. which were attacked by the Mongols 30 years before that, right? Mm. So Baghdad pe hum lo 1258 by Helugu, right? And 30 years before that, Central Asian Persian cities were destroyed. Though, like Nishapur, Nishapur was badly affected. Like it was destroyed. Mm. Right uh, to the ground. Exactly. It, it wasn't, so Baghdad wasn't even as badly hit as Nishapur. Um, so in fact, Baghdad even recovered after one month. Or as a recover, hua ke, the libraries were, well, were functioning actually. So the, again, these are all just fairy tales. So mein jo, uh, if you want to know more about this, uh, the formation of post-classical philosophy in Islam. 
फ्रेंक रेफल टॉक्स अबाउट दिस तो ये सेकेंड नेरेटिव है राइट सो सो द फ्लैट अर्थ वन एंड देन द बगदाद वन द थर्ड वन इसके ऑटोमन पीरियड में इन फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन सेंचुरी यहाँ पर डिक्लाइन आया तो दिस इज ऑल्सो अभी जो रिसेंट जो डेटा है हमारे पास इट इज पॉइंटिंग टू समथिंग एल्स ओके एक बुक है Uh, again I'm giving a lot of references because this is great to, I mean this yeah, is great because yeah. people love wo hamesha mujhse puch rahe hote hain ah man it's great ke you know you yeah. can just yeah, yeah. because yeah. Uh, again like I know I'm uh, like I'm not an academic on the subject I'm just yeah. I want to point people to those sources so they can like fact check right. me on this right. Right. do fact check me on anything that I'm saying right. so that if you want to acha to ye narrative hai ke ottoman period mein there was a rise of orthodoxy uh fir uske baad phir um jo astronomical observatories theme wo tabah ho gayi thi so that's that's where the decline happened there's a book on this that you can read which debunks this it's called uh, islamic intellectual history in the 16th and 17th century uh by khalid el ruwaib uh acha the 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 names that i'm giving out these are like authorities on the subject uh, right. like leading authorities to khalid el ruwaib is a genius uski ek aur kitab hai the development of arabic logic from 1200 to 1800 so you people can check that out so the fourth narrative hai right so we have you we covered three narratives right the right. fourth narrative hai wo ye hai ki 1819 century mein decline aaya uh uske external or internal factors the this is the interesting one now we will talk about this one so acha ab about the uh, destruction of uh, astronomical observatories it did happen in the ottoman period lekin uski wajah ye nahi tha ki people were doing science or something it's because astrology ki wajah se because people right. like, it's already is like a pseudo science so right so uh, also after the Bagh- the, the destruction of baghdad 1258 in 1259 the largest astronomical observatory was built in the entire world actually like in the entire world to wo bani usme marakh mein modern day iran so uh, yeah just about the uh, astronomical observatories to jo fourth narrative hai it's wo ye hai ke because of colonialism because of uh jo bahar se jo pressures aa rahi thi muslim world mein so hmm. the muslim world sort of closed in on themselves right. to uski so let's just focus on, on on the ottoman period right jo ottoman empire thi um so by the by 19th century hmm. the ottomans faced a series of uh humiliating defeats at the hands of russians right to usse hua ye ki they basically they entered an age of crisis right because they were realizing ke jo hamari dominance thi in military in battle ground wagera they were, we were not they, like they realized ke they were not defeating you know the western european nation states to usme phir they thought of reforming things right to yahan par unhone reforms introduce kiya ab one thing about again the islamic intellectual tradition usko samajhne ke liye we have to understand the anthropology like the whole context social context ke wo kis tarah like mm. how did the madrasas function right right to usme one important uh, fact uh, one important aspect of islamic tradition is waqf institution to waqf institutions were in the form of you know soup kitchens ya gharibo ke liye khana ya unke liye shelter ya bewaon ke liye you know unke liye un, unki jo dekhbhal hoti thi और इसी तरह जो मदरसे थे कॉलेजेस वो भी वक्फ में आते थे तो एजुकेशन इन द मुस्लिम वर्ल्ड वाज फ्री लाइक अ टीचर टेकिंग मनी फ्रॉम द स्टूडेंट दैट वाज वन ऑफ द लाइक वर्स्ट थिंग दैट यू कैन डू सो अल गजाली इफ यू रीड अल गजाली ही रियली लाइक यू नो ह्यूमिलिएट्स द पर्सन वो कहते कि यू नो वो टीचर जो पैसे लेता है इज नॉट यू नो रियल टीचर वगैरह इज नॉट ही डजन हैव एनी वेस्टम वगैरह सो एजुकेशन वॉज फ्री इन द मुस्लिम वर्ल्ड इन द सेंस दैट द स्टूडेंट if you are a seeker of knowledge you don't have to pay for it you you can just go to madrasa and learn from scholars aur jo madrasa ki jo building hua karti thi aur uska kharcha wagaira so so imagine you have a, a typical madrasa right you have a section for copyist jo kitabo ko copy karte hain mm. you have uh, you know a, a library central library you have a place for mosque mm. right and then you have lodgings as well for the scholars to live there is is puri building ka kharcha usko sustain karna that was you know something that the sultanate would do like the jo sultan hua karte the so if you talk about the niz- the nizamiya madrasa it was built by the nizam al mulk in the seljuk empire or uh, imam ghazali was made the uh, the head of that uh, you know madrasa to khair back to 19th century to waqf institution is is very important if you want to understand the education system to usme pe ye hua ki because of uh, acha uh, 60% of the real estate was allocated to waqf institutions in the ottoman empire so that was a huge thing फिर रिफ लेकिन रिफॉर्म्स की वजह से उन्होंने ये किया कि जो वेल्थ उन्होंने एलोकेट की थी वक्फ के लिए यू नो ईयरली एनअली या मंथली दे चैनल दैट टू गवर्नमेंटल प्रोजेक्ट्स राइट सो इमेजिन द यूरोपियंस आर इनक्रोचिंग अपॉन द ऑटोमन एम्पायर एंड वट दे वॉन्ट के वी वॉन्ट टू सेंट्रलाइज द गवर्नमेंट राइट तो उसके लिए उन्होंने ट्रेल ट्रैक्स बिछाई यू नो ट्रेन बनाई ताकि वी कैन सेंड री इन्फोर्समेंट्स वेरी क्विकली राइट गवर्नमेंटल प्रोजेक्ट्स वगैरह वगैरह 
तो जो यू नो द मनी दे है एलोकेटेड फॉर द वर्क दैट वॉज चैनल टू गवर्नमेंटल प्रोजेक्ट्स तो उससे हुआ ये कि दिस इज़ नाइनटीन सेंचुरी राइट इन इन द बिगिनिंग के बाई एटीन फिफ्टी दी जो वक्फ के लिए जो पैसा एलोकेट हुआ था लाइक like जो हर साल होता था दैट बिकेम लिटली जीरो तो जब वक्फ एंड अगेन जो मदरसा से थे और पार्ट ऑफ द वक्फ इंस्टीट्यूशन राइट तो जो नेचुरल हैबिटैट यू नो दैट मीन दैट सस्टेन द ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड ईयर्स ऑफ इंटेलेक्चुअल ट्रोडिशन बिकॉज दैट इंस्टीट्यूशन वॉज डिस्ट्रॉयड दैट हैबिटेट वॉज डिस्ट्रॉयड द ट्रोडिशन कोलेप्सड लाइक लिटरली कोलेप्सड दे वर नो मदरसाज वो वेल फंक्शन नहीं थे उनकी देखभाल के लिए कोई नहीं था और स्कॉलर्स वन आर टीचिंग दे राइट तो जब वो कोलेप्स हुई तो उसकी उसका वन कॉन्सिक्वेंस ये था कि पोस्ट 1900 अगर आप स्कॉलर्स उनके किसी काम को उठाएं लाइक यू रीड देयर तफसर समथिंग एंड यू टेक द स्कॉलरली वर्क ऑफ सम लाइक एटीन सेंचुरी स्कॉलर यू विल सी अ स्टॉक डिफरेंस इन द वे दट इवन आर्ग्यू अबाउट द वर्ल्ड या रियालिटी तो दैट्स वाई जब ये जब जब कोलेप्स हुआ so this collapse has been called epistemic rupture right epistemology you know the way that we understand the, the world right or rupture is rupture so because the tradition collapsed ek rupture aaya aur us rupture mein it separated us from the 1200 years of tradition so uske baad that's why after you know post 1850s ya post 1900 kele you will see muslim scholars arguing for socialism and islam capitalism and islam you know human rights and islam because jo tradition tha you know the, the authentic tradition wo jo maintain hua tha that collapsed so we were sort of a, in a sort of a, like a free fall uh, you know movement and that's why you saw nationalism and islam as well it was a huge thing in the arab world socialism and islam was a huge thing like people wanted to make it compatible so that was because we were we almost became homeless jo hamari tradition thi it became homeless so we wanted to make it compatible you know with 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 uh, you know stronger jo narratives there aur dudi ka ek quote hai Uh, I have some disagreements with Mahmoudi as well, but I think he was a great thinker. So, his quote is that the prevailing philosophies and opinions of the world are always those which are written by the hands that are holding the sword at the same time. Mm. And I think post ni- post nineteenth century that 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 that's what happened mm-hmm. in the Muslim world. Again, if you want to know more about this, I'll give a reference again. It's uh, there's a book. It recently came out this year. It came out this year. It's called Palimpsest of Themselves. It's written by Dr. Asad Ahmed, who is a, a giant in the Islamic intellectual, intellectual tradition. Or uh, he focuses on South Asia, ke South Asia me like what was the the whole thing, or um, specifically on the point of decline. Like jo jo kahani maine suna hai, work ke baare me wakera. Yeh ek kitab hai um, Reforming Modernity by Wael Halag. To usme jo introduction hai, it's like 28 pages, and usme baaki references bhi hai, like further references. So people can check that out. जो मैंने कहानी सुनाई वक्फ कर रहे हैं दैट्स ऑल दैट आई जस्ट समर एज ट्वेंटी एट पेजेस फॉर एवरी मंथ तो एंड द पॉइंट अबाउट डॉक्टर असद वॉज दैट ही टॉक्स अबाउट इवन इन सेंट्रल एशिया एटीन सेंचुरी में पीपल लाइक देर वर थियोलॉजन देर वर फिलोसफर देर वर मैथमेटिशंस एज वेल तो या आपने एटीन नाइनटीन सेंचुरी वाला यू वॉल एक्सप्लेन दैट पहला तो मुझे ये बताएं कि देर इज अगेन टूडेज डे एंड एज देर इज दिस प्रिवेलिंग I would say narrative about madrasas, yeah. right? Because we, most of of the 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 people who have grown up in this day and age and age gone to uh, government schools schools. private schools. Pakistan mein na, pata hai, education ke systems hai. So you've mm. got the OA levels, which is 0.1 yeah. of the population. Uh, you've got the uh, FSC, um, jo ke mera hai, my understanding is around 40, 45 and then you've got the madrasa system, which yeah. is similar numbers. Um, and सो जो एजुकेटेड आपकी अर्बन पॉपुलेशन है वो लार्जली ये बिलीव करती है कि यार ये मदरसे तो बस एम ही जाहिर लोग प्रोड्यूस कर रहे हैं जाहिर लोग हैं इसमें जो है ना वो ये तो बस रिलीजन 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 करते हैं मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड का कोई कॉन्सेप्ट नहीं है मॉडर्न साइंसिस का कोई कॉन्सेप्ट नहीं है इसकी बड़ी बेसिक सी मिसाल ये है कि जब सिंगल नेशनल करिकुलम आया तो उसके ऊपर जो आई वॉज सरप्राइज कि इट्स अ वेरी लार्ज curriculum with a lot of different things but the only arguments that i saw was ke usme islamiyat kyun hai um usme jo hai wo madrasson ko paisa kyun diya ja raha hai madrasson ko regulate kyun kiya ja raha hai and i have a podcast as well jiske upar you know there's there's a detailed arguments sayed mazamil ke sath you can check that out as well um where my argument was ke listen i mean teaching islam the correlation is not causation right so uh, because you've had a troubled history in the last 30 years you cannot say ke anyone who teaches islam or talks about islam is going to end up as a terrorist mm. um that has a lot of geopolitical factors that may have leveraged religion as a way to sort of achieve their goals but yeah. 
देर आर अदर कंट्रीज इन द वर्ल्ड वेयर एग्जैक्टली सेम और इवन फर्दर आपको इस्लामिक स्टडीज़ भी हैं आपको आई मीन यू ए में सऊदी में मलेशिया में दस लॉट ऑफ कॉलोली वर्क दैट्स बिंग टन वहाँ तो आपको वो आउटकम नहीं नजर आ रहा जो पाकिस्तान में आ रहा है सो टू से दैट मदरसा इन इनहेरेंटली आर 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 डिस्ट्रक्टिव इज इज इन माई ओपिनियन इज इट्स 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 इंटेलेक्चुअल डिसऑनेस्टी राधर दैन से लेसन लाइक मदरसा सिस्टम्स मे रिक्वायर रिफॉर्मेशन बिकॉज वी मे बी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड दैम सो मच कि अब हमें जाके एज अ सिंगल यूनिट आइडेंटिफाई करना है कि हमारा एजुकेशन सिस्टम कैसा होना चाहिए मे बी टेक सम फ्राम हेयर टेक सम फ्राम हेयर एंड क्रिएट समथिंग ग्राउंड अप अभी जो आपने बात बोली कि यू नो एक एक सॉर्ट ऑफ इस्लामिक एजुकेशन सिस्टम एग्जिस्ट करता था ऑटोमन एम्पायर रिसेंट हिस्ट्री में सबसे जो बड़ा हमारा वो रहा है और वो फिर एटीन नाइनटीन सेंचुरी में तबाह हुआ और तबाह होने के बाद हम कभी उसके बाद वो एक सिस्टम बना नहीं सके और आज तक वेरी ऑनेस्टली वॉट वे ट्राइंग टू डू एज वे स्टिल ट्राइंग टू फिगर आउट के जिस तरह आपने बोला कि हम बेसिकली देख रहे हैं कि दुनिया का एक निज़ाम है और हम हमारे बिलीव्स उस निज़ाम में किस तरह ओके हो सकते हैं राधर देन सेंग के ओके कोर पे हम हैं और हम उन तमाम दुनिया की चीज़ों को किस तरह अपने अंदर इंटीग्रेट कर सकते हैं दिस अ बिग डिफरेंस बिटवीन बोथ राइट इन दैट कॉन्टेक्सट हाउ डू यू सी द मदरसाज ऑफ टूडे एंड एंड वॉट मे बी रिक्वायर्ड फॉर पोटेंशियल रेफॉर्मेशन ऑफ सच इंस्टीट्यूशनफेक्ट सो आई वो से टू थिंग्स टू टू पॉइंट सो द फर्स्ट इज लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द ट्रेडिशनल मदरसाज जस्ट फुल लिटल टाइम तो हमारे वेर मी टॉक अबाउट इस्लामिक हिस्ट्री हमारे माइंड में ये इस तरह यू नो एक आइडिया है एक परसेप्शन है कि द मुलाज वर चेसिंग अराउंड द साइंटिस्ट ऑल द टाइम विच इज़ नॉट ट्रू लेकिन ये परसेप्शन है तो और ये हम डिस्टिंगशन करते हैं कि ऑन द वन हैंड यू हैड द फिलोसफर्स एंड ऑन द अदर हैंड यू हैड द मुलाज वर चेसिंग दम आउट दैट्स नॉट दिस इज ए क्रिश्चन रीडिंग ऑफ इस्लामिक हिस्ट्री सो इट जो इस आइडियाज जिन्होंने पहलाए थे अबाउट अल हज़ारी सो दे वर लाइक हेगल वॉज एट द टॉप मतलब ही एक्चुअली स्टार्ट द होल थिंग बट दैन द गाई हु मेड इट पॉपुलराइज वॉज इज नेम वॉज अर्नस फ्रेनान वॉज अ फ्रेंच थिंकर तो अच्छा वाई डिड दिस से दैट मतलब वाई वुड अर्नस रेनान से दैट वॉज बिकॉज ऑफ हिज एक्सपीरियंस विद द कैथोलिक चर्च तो वन ही सॉ द मुस्लिम वर्ल्ड ही वॉज लाइक ओके यू हैव दीज रिलीजियस रिलीजियस कॉडन कोड पीपल एंड देन यू हैव यू नो द फ्री थिंकर्स कॉडन कोड द एरेस्ट्रेलियंस दे फॉर दे दे मस्ट हैव दिस अग्रीमेंट सो ही जस्ट प्रोजेक्टेड हिज ओन रीडिंग इन टू द मुस्लिम वर्ल्ड बट वी नो के इट डेंट हैपन इट डेंट एक्जिस्ट उसकी एग्जाम्पल्स है कुछ फॉर एग्जाम्पल अच्छा लेट स्टार्ट विद इबन सिन्हा इबन सिन्हा कंसिडर हिम सेल्फ टू बी लाइक ए यू नो ए कंजर्वेटिव मुस्लिम राइट पीपल हैव डिसग्रीमेंट्स अबाउट हिज बिलीफ्स बट ही कंसिडर हिम सेल्फ टू बी ए कंजर्वेटिव मुस्लिम um and later on you have someone like uh, you know um, al shatir right one of the i think he acha al shatir uh, atusi another great astronomer mathematician al shatir be an astronomer the mathematician uh, qutbuddin shirazi great astronomer mathematician these were the scientists who uh, they were working on you know uh, the movement of celestial bodies they were coming up with uh, you know um, uh, heliocentric models etc us pe wo kaam kar rahe the they didn't achieve it, but they were actually working on it unke jo kaam the that was something that copernicus was like copernicus read them and then that's how he it, you know he was led to the heliocentric model or uh, and there's actually a, a good documented work on this people can read so you can read uh, david king right i think he has done the most extensive work on islamic ast- astronomy and islam okay how islam paved the way for astronomical uh, advancements so ye jo maine naam liye hain kush kush ji or you know khatibi wagaira atusi they were all theologians So Al Shatir, I think one of the sharpest mathematicians in the Muslim world, he was a mosque timekeeper. Or Atusi ki abad kare, Atusi ki jo kitabe thi, and again he was a great astronomer. But in his theological works, thi, they were being read in madrasas in the Ottoman period, mm-hmm. right? So, so, so this distinction that we have about you know, ke mulla ek side pe and the mathematicians on the other side, that's also not true. So that's the first thing that we have to understand about the traditional madrasa system, right? Where like th- that madrasa, like jo unka agar ap curriculum dekhe, to give one example, uh, Nizamiya madrasa. So I actually posted about this on Twitter as well, where where Dr. Asad is explaining the whole madrasa curriculum uh, at that time. So there are multiple books on astronomy, multiple books on mathematics. So wo akhir mein kehte hain after a long list, wo kehte hain ki this is this is the curriculum not of a, an extremist. This is the curriculum of a mathematician or philosopher. and i think that's true so ye to first you know misconception hai ke madrasa has always been like this but it it's not or is example say the greatest theologians were also the greatest scientists in the muslim world the second point about the whole 
एक्सट्रीमिस्ट पॉइंट के मदरसा में एक्सट्रीमिज़म है लेट्स एक्चुअली क्लोज इन ऑन दिस वन तो एक बुक है पाकिस्तान अंडर सीज बाई मदी अफजल एंड पीपल कैन रीड दिस उनमें उस बुक में वो क्या करती हैं कि शी एक्चुअली यू नो इंटरव्यूज पीपल इन मदरसाज और इन स्कूल यू नो जस्ट जस्ट टू चेक एक्सट्रीमिज़म कि यहाँ पर एक्सट्रीमिज़म है या नहीं एंड शी वहाँ पर जो स्टिस्टिक्स है बुक में पीपल कैन लाइक रीड इट अप एंड दे कैन अंडरस्टैंड कि एक्सट्रीमिज़म कहाँ पर है इनफैक्ट एक स्टडी थी इट वॉज ग्लोबल स्टडी आई थिंक बाई गैलप तो उसमें इट्स उसका नाम है वीव्स ऑफ वीव्स ऑन वायलेंस राइट वीव्स ऑन वायलेंस सो पीपल कैन गूगल दिस तो इंटरेस्टिंग इनफ वैन पीपल वर आस्ट अराउंड द वर्ल्ड के डू यू थिंक सिविलियंस शुड बी किल्ड नॉट जस्ट एज अ कोलेट्रल डैमेज बट दर इंक्लूड टू बट नॉट जस्ट एज अ कोलेट्रल डैमेज इवन इफ किलिंग ऑफ द इनसेंट वॉज सोर्ट ऑफ अ वे टू अचीव आवर नेशनल गोल्स तो एंड दिस मे शॉक सम पीपल बट लाइक थर्टी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ ब्रिटेन जो वहाँ के लोग थे दे एक्चुअली सेट की येस दे शुड बी किल्ड और ऑलमोस्ट लाइक सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ अमेरिकन स्टॉट के इट्स ओके टू किल इनोसेंट पीपल इफ दैट यू नो लीड्स टू आवर ओन नेशनल इंटरेस्ट एंड आई थिंक ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ अफी जो पीपल ऑफ अफगानिस्तान सेट के इट्स ओके दिस वॉज दिस वॉज लाइक ईयर्स बैक सो दिस वॉज द टाइम ऑफ यू नो कॉन्फ्लिक्स एंड वॉर्स और इन पाकिस्तान आई थिंक इट वॉज लाइक ट्वेल्व परसेंट वेर पीपल सेट के यू नो वट वी शुड किल इनोसेंट पीपल इफ दैट लीड्स टू अवर रिलीजियस गोल्स या नेशनल गोल्स सो यू कैन सी सी द कंपेरिजन राइट यू हैव स्वीडन एंड यू नो स्विट्जरलैंड यू हैव ब्रिटेन इसराइल थर्टी थर्टी टू परसेंट इसराइल आई थिंक यू हैव दीज वर्ल्ड फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड कंट्रीज डेवलप कंट्रीज उनमें जो लोग कहते हैं लोग कहते हैं कि यू नो वी शुड किल इनोसेंट पीपल इफ दैट यू नो अचीव और नेशनल इंटरेस्ट एंड देन यू हैव द मुस्लिम मुलाज एक्सट्रीमिस्ट वो कह रहे कि नो यू शुड किल इनोसेंट पीपल उसमें ट्वेल्व परसेंट है तो एंड दैट्स नॉट जस्ट द पब्लिक आप अगर अगेन यू कैन अगर आप एकेडीमिया को पढ़ें जो लिबरल स्कॉलर्स हैं तो देर इज़ वन गाय हिज नेम इज प्रोफेसर बेरी बुजान ही टॉक्स अबाउट के सेकेंड वर्ल्ड वॉर में जो लिबरल स्टेट्स थी जो जो बेसिकली देर फाइटिंग एज अ नाजीज दे एक्चुअली डिट मेक एनी डिफरेंस बिटवीन द सिविलियंस एंड द नाजी सोल्जर्स और आई डोंट हैव दर्थ द नेम्स ऑफ द ऑथर्स इन माई माइंड राइट नाउ बट आर प्लेंटी ऑफ अदर स्कॉलर्स हु सेट द एक्जैक्टली द सेम थिंग देर वॉज वन ऑथर अगेन आई आई शेयर दिस लेटर ऑन द रेफरेंस तो वो कहते हैं कि वो ही बेसिकली आस दिस क्वेश्चन राइट ही सच के शुड बी किल इनोसेंट पीपल इफ दिस यू नो अचीव्स आवर नेशनल गोल्स तो ही सच के द आंसर इज येस बट विद सम हेजिटेशन राइट सो दिस इज नॉट समथिंग कि या तो सिर्फ पब्लिक में है इवन अगर आप Again, these people are in universities, right? They're, they're actually professors, academics. Hain. They actually believe that you know, killing of the innocent is something that is, you know, rational. It, it can be rationally justified, etc., etc. And this has a whole history, actually. Liberalism, if you look at it, some of the great liberal philosophers like John Locke, John Stuart Mill. खैर उनकी व्यूज तो बहुत ही एक्सट्रीम्स है लाइक दे बेसिकली सेंगे यू नो स्लेवरी इज़ फाइन यू कैन एक्चुअली मर्डर जेनोसाइड इन एंटायर पॉपुलेशन वाई बिकॉज नॉर्थ अमेरिका में जो लोग थे जो ज़मीन जहाँ पर वो रह रहे हैं दैट्स नॉट देयर लैंड बिकॉज अकॉर्डिंग टू आवर डिफिनेशन यू आर द ऑनर ऑफ लैंड इफ़ यू आर द कल्टिवेटर ऑफ इट दीज पीपल आर नॉट नॉट द कल्टिवेटर्स ऑफ इट देयर फॉर इट्स नॉट देयर लैंड देयर फॉर वी कैन एलिमिनेट दम एंड सो वी कैन वुल एक्चुअली डिस्कस इन डिटेल अबाउट यू नो लिबरलिज्म एंड इट्स लाइक ओरिजिन इमर्जेंस बट दिस इज जस्ट टू पॉइंट आउट के देर इज अ होल ट्रोडिशन राइट थ्री हंड्रेड ईयर्स ऑफ ट्रोडिशन जो ये कहती है कि यू नो इफ फॉर नेशनल इंटरेस्ट you can actually dis- you know kill innocent people whatever whatever so this this whole you know phobia this whole matlab uh, uh, you know uh, you know shock ka jo expression hai ke oh my god in madrasas people are taught to kill other people for the basis like on difference of religion to me that just doesn't make any sense like agar jo poles hain you can actually study them right western countries jahan wahan par log hain uh, you will actually find them more you know willing to justify the killing of the innocent people and i'm not i'm not making this up you can actually you know read the you know right. their books so. agar main aapse is tarah so okay let's take it like this um on average kisi bhi society mein pakistan being one of them uh ek pura spectrum exist karta hai right so you've got your let's say far right and you got your far left mm-hmm. the far right would be ki there are kyunki hota hai ki koi bhi ek baat bolta hai na to hamare yahan jo ab discourse aur debate ho gayi hai wo ye ho gayi hai ki extreme examples leke usko pure pe paint kar do right so there will definitely be a madrasa somewhere jo ki apna ko madrasa bolta hai but basically wo एक अगेन लाइक आई सेट के वो पोलिटिकल ऑब्जेक्टिव अचीव करने के लिए वो कोई किसी प्रॉक्सी वॉर के सोजर्स ट्रेन कर रहे हैं ठीक है तो द फार राइट साइड ऑफ थिंग्स वेयर लेट्स कॉल इट टेररिस्ट कैंप ठीक है देन यू गॉट द कम्प्लीटली फार लेफ्ट 
جو کہ اس وقت بالکل کمپلیٹلی کہتا ہے اچھا یہ ٹیررسٹ کیمپ اس کو ہم کہہ رہے ہیں ضروری نہیں ہے کہ یہ بندے مارنے کے لیے ٹرین کر رہا ہے وہ ایٹ لیسٹ دماغ میں یہ انکلکیشن کر رہا ہے کہ اس ورسز دیم کریٹ کر کے وہ کہہ رہا ہے کہ یو نو واٹ اس کی پوری آئیڈیالوجی اکیڈیمیا پہ بیسڈ نہیں ہے ریشنل تھنکنگ کریٹیکل تھنکنگ پہ نہیں ہے وہ صرف اس چیز کے اوپر ہے کہ یہ ہمارے دشمن ہیں یہ جو تباہی پھیلا رہے ہیں اور تم اس کا کاؤنٹر ہو ٹھیک ہے پھر آپ کے پاس ایک سارٹ آف فار لیفٹ امرج کر رہی ہے جو کہ بیسیکلی بجائے اس کے اگین دیر آر اسکالرس جو کہ سائنٹسٹس ہیں اپیرنٹلی بٹ وہ پورا ٹائم اپنا گزارتے ہیں ریلیجن کو بیش کرنے میں ایک ایک بڑا میں نے آرٹیکل پڑھا پچھلے دنوں جس میں انہوں صاحب نے بولا کہ پاکستانی جو ہے نا جو کشتیوں میں جاتا ہے وہ بیسیکلی سارے سارے سیکچولی فرسٹریٹیڈ ہیں اور وہ جو ہے وہ یورپ جا رہے ہیں تاکہ وہ اپنی سیکچول فینٹسیز پوری کر سکیں جسٹ دا لیول آف ٹون ڈیفنس دیئر واز جسٹ مائنڈ نمنگ کہ یہ غریب آدمی جا رہا ہے جا کے گریک کے کوسٹ میں اگر ڈوب کے مر رہا ہے تو وہ اس وجہ سے نہیں جا رہا کیونکہ اس کو وہاں پہ سیکچول فینٹسیز پوری کرنی ہے ان فیکٹ پاکستان میں بیکاز آف دا لیک آف لا اینڈ آڈر پرابلی ہی ہیز مور اپرچونیٹی وہ اس وجہ سے جا رہا ہے بیکاز آپ لوگوں نے تباہ کر دیا ملک اور اس کے پاس کھانے کے لیے نہیں ہے اس کی فیملی کے پاس کھانے کے لیے نہیں ہے وہ اپنی بیوی بچے کو لے کر جا رہا ہے تو اٹ جسٹ اٹس مائنڈ نمنگ کہ سم ون ہو آن دا لبرل سائڈ آف تھنگس وہ بیٹھ کے باٹم آف دا فوڈ چین کو آسٹراسائز کر رہا ہے بیٹھ کے اپنے کمفرٹ سے اپنی پرولیس جسٹ اگین فار می دیٹ از فار لیفٹ وی آر دیر جسٹ بیکم سو ڈس کنیکٹیڈ فرام سوسائٹی اینڈ اگین آر بلڈنگ آر لارجلی ایوری ایسپیکٹ آف وٹ ایور آپ ان کے سامنے رکھیں گے نا تو وہ اس کو آس پاس دیم میں لگا کے کھڑا کر دیں گے کہ یار نہیں نہیں ایکچولی نا وہ یہ ریلیجس لوگ ہیں انہوں نے تباہ کر دیا ورنہ تو ہم ایک زبردست قسم کی یوٹوپیا میں رہ رہے ہوتے اینڈ اس میں اکیڈیمکس اکیڈیمکس ہیں اس میں بہت سارے کامنٹیٹرز ہیں جو کہ میرے ذاتی خیال ہے کہ وہ جو ایٹیز آپ کو نظر آ رہے ہیں کہ وہ فورٹیز ففٹیز میں ہیں وہ ڈرگ سیکس راک اینڈ رول والی ٹائم میں بڑے ہوئے اس وقت ضیاء الحق تھا یہاں پر وہ ان کی آس رہ گئی کہ یار کاش ہم بھی جو ہیں وہ یو نو اس میں رہتے وہ پچاس پچاس سال کے ہو گئے ہیں بٹ وہ ابھی تک جو نا دے وانٹ سم سارٹ آف اے پاکستان دیٹ جسٹ دیٹ سارٹ آف اے پاکستان جو وہ چاہ رہے ہیں وہ نہ اس طرح کا انڈیا ہے نہ اس طرح کا چائنا ہے نہ اس طرح کا جاپان ہے Um, you know, like the different regions evolve differently. Yeah. They have different cultures. Um, it is not a Islamic problem. It is a problem. It's a, it's an entirely different uh, East versus West ka problem. Hai. Um, but but either ways, yeah, you have a sort of spectrum. Hai, hai? Yeah. In spectrum, mein pher, hai bahut sare different shades of gray. اور اب اب مجھے جو مسئلہ آتا ہے نا میں اگر اس میں شیڈس آف گرے میں فردر ایک ڈیمارکیشن لیں میں کہتا ہوں کہ ایک سینٹر ایگزٹ کرتی ہے جس میں سینٹر لیفٹ میں بھی لوگ ہیں سینٹر رائٹ میں بھی لوگ ہیں اور سینٹر میں بھی لوگ ہیں اور یہ لوگ نا سب سے زیادہ والٹائل ہوتے ہیں یہ ڈسکشنس کرتے ہیں اور یہ اپنے نا اوپینینس چینج کر رہے ہوتے ہیں بیسڈ آن واٹ ایور دیئر گیٹنگ اس سے جو آگے والے لوگ ہوتے ہیں نا وہ آہستہ آہستہ ایکسٹریم ہو چکے ہوتے ہیں تو جنرلی دے اسپینڈ موسٹ آف دیئر ٹائم بیشنگ دی ادر سائڈ رائٹ اب میرا کوشچن یہ ہے کہ A lot of times when we, so یہ ہم نے ڈسکشن کر لی کہ یار ٹھیک ہے آپ نے یہ بات بتا دی کہ جو اس وقت پریویلنگ نیریٹوز ہیں جن نیریٹوز کو ان کو بریک کرنے کی ضرورت ہے اینڈ ایز اے اسٹارٹر ونس وی بروکن دوز نیریٹوز ناؤ وی آر ایبل ٹو ناؤ تھنک مور فریلی ان ٹرمز آف دا پرابلم اسٹیٹمنٹ اینڈ کم اپ وتھ سولیوشنس بٹ ناؤ ود ان دا سیم تھنگ کہ میں کہتا ہوں کہ یار ٹھیک ہے آپ کہتے ہیں کہ اسلامک ہسٹری جو ہے وہ آپ کو صحیح نہیں پڑھائی گئی اور اس ہسٹری کے اندر بہت کچھ ایسا ہے جس کو آپ پڑھیں گے تو آپ کے اندر ایک 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 پرائڈ بھی ہوگی آپ کے اندر ایک سینس آف ڈائریکشن بھی ہوگی کیا کرنا ہے کیا نہیں کرنا بٹ ماڈرن ڈے کے اندر بیکاز وہ درمیان میں دو سو سال ایپسنس رہا اور پریولنگ نیریٹوز رہے تو ایون ود ان دا ماڈرن جسے کہتے ہیں نا اسلامک انٹلیکچوئل ڈسکورس اینڈ اسلامک اور اس میں انٹلیکچوئل ڈسکورس میں ضروری یہ نہیں کہہ رہا کہ وہ اکیڈمکس ہی ہیں ٹھیک ہے اس میں بھی بہت کوئکس آ چکے ہوئے ہیں بیکاز وہ لارجلی دے آر پارٹ آف دا دا ایکسٹریم فرینجز جن کا کور پریمس از ٹو اٹیک دی ادر سائڈ رائٹ جب آپ ایک اپنے آپ کو اسلامک اسکالر کہتے ہیں اور آپ کی ساری یوٹیوب ویڈیوز آر اباؤٹ میری کرسمس کرنا نہیں کرنا یار از دیٹ اے پرابلم آف پاکستانیز یو نو لائک ہاؤ مینی لائک ہاؤ مینی پاکستانیز آر گوئنگ آؤٹ دیر اینڈ اینڈ ویشنگ سم ون اے میری کرسمس بٹ دے اٹس ڈس کنیکٹیڈ فرام یور کور ایز ویل سملرلی آپ کے لیفٹ میں لوگ ہیں جو کہ کانسٹنٹلی وہ وہ بیٹھ کے آپ کو پرابلم سالو کم کر رہے ہیں اور وہ صرف اور صرف اس ورسز دیم کے نیریٹو پلے کر رہے ہیں سو لیٹس ٹاک اباؤٹ آئی وانٹ ٹاک اباؤٹ دا رائٹ فاسٹ رائٹ بیکاز اٹس ای
कि आई रियलाइज कि ओके फाइन सो वे नॉट डूइंग अ गुड जॉब एंड वे नॉट डूइंग अ गुड जॉब बिकॉज वी रियली स्क्रूड अप राइट लाइक आवर वी डोंट हैव द स्ट्रक्चर्स दैट इट शुड एग्जिस्ट टू गिव ए एन एकेडेमिक काउंटर थाट सो माई क्वेश्चन इज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ओवर द लास्ट फिफ्टी ईयर्स ऑफ हिस्ट्री खास का जो पैन इस्लामिक मूवमेंट आई जो जियो पोलिटिकल शिफ्ट आई जिसके अंदर रिलीजन सॉर्ट ऑफ बिकेम वेरी पोलराइज एंड वॉलोटाइल उसमें क्या ऐसा हुआ कि जिसकी वजह से जो हमारी इस्लामिक इंटेलेक्चुअल डिस्कोर्स जो हो सकती थी वो ख़त्म हो गई बाय एंड लार्ज और आज आप कैसे देखते हैं अगर मैं पाकिस्तान की बात करूं कि क्या डिस्कोर्स है क्या स्पेस फॉर डिस्कोर्स है क्या वो डिस्कोर्स डेवलप हो रही है Um, क्या वो स्कॉलर्स एग्जिस्ट करते हैं क्या वो अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर दो स्कॉलर्स आल्सो एग्जिस्ट के वो स्कॉलर्स बन सकें और वो डिस्कोर्स में आ सकें सो दैट इवेंचुअली वी वी हैव द रेलेवेंट राइट एजुकेटेड एकेडमिक्स हु कैन बिगिन टू आर्ग्यू विद रैशनैलिटी एंड बी एबल टू चेंज द नेरेटिव एज यू आइडेंटिफाइड राइट फर्स्ट थिंग I agree with you know the way that society is right now right where we're always like you know just throwing stones at the other one um with regards to just sir apne structure ke baat ki there is no you know uh in this structure education institute where we can actually you know um you know present our own arguments very well agar aap pakistan mein you know this reaction that we're seeing against western anything like western ideologies jo bhi hain values wagaira political systems wagaira the reason that we are seeing this you know uh this reaction was because we lack a systematic you know uh, a system right we actually we, we lack a system that can help us in that can actually give us direction that has a strategy in the future wagaira wagaira this sudden rise of interest in islam your western ideologies yeah this idea that we have to refute them and we have to make sure that they don't influence us that's partly because we lack a system and one of the things that i have been uh, you know like the reason that i have i've actually stayed on twitter and you know trying to uh, you know interact with students and want to you know make my own contribution to this was because i do i just, I just don't want muslims or pakistanis to be specific to be stuck in this reactionary mode right where they are theek hai aaj liberalism aaj liberalism khatam ho jayega right feminism will die out if that's all you want in the future there will be xism which will be far more vicious far more powerful than liberalism or feminism ever could be mm-hmm. so what are you going to do then so that's why i think uh, if we, we we should have a system a systematic discourse in, in which we have a strategy in also in which we also know about our own past that's why i emphasize so much about the intellectual tradition jo narratives hain right so and i want everyone every muslim actually to even non muslims also welcome to understand our own tradition if we had this tradition then there was this epistemic rupture wo ek break aaya because of internal and external reasons and the first thing that we should do is to go back to actually re- rediscover this tradition like i said in academia mein it is you know we're just scratching the surface about this to agar academia mein we're just scratching the surface to public mein to obviously it's like nothing to or you know to go back like to make this first step right of you know discovering the tradition and then having a strategy for the future uske liye you have to like i i have to fight these obstacles these narratives that are so dominant jinka koi koi academic source nahi hai it's just like propaganda and even though i personally have reached out to so many of those voices uh through many mediums even uh you know personal i've actually have you know have a conversation with them as well they've always like they've always ignored what i've said राइट और मतलब मैं जो भी बोलता हूँ लाइक आई गिव आई वुड गिव दम टू रेफरेंस वगैरह दे वुड सी थिंग्स मतलब दे वुड रीड एवरी थिंग आफ्टर दैट दे वुड रिस्पॉन्ड टू टू मी एंड आई डोट वॉन्ट गिव अट नेम्स बट दिसन टू मी सो मेनी टाइम्स इन यूनिवर्सिटी एंड आउटसाइड ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी ऑनलाइन एज वेल एंड सो समाइम्स समटाइम्स आई फील के देर इज सम लाइक समथिंग इज गोइंग ऑन राइट आई थिंक के द पीपल फॉर प्रोपिकेटिंग दिस दिस नेरेटिव दे आर प्रोटी स्मार्ट दे आर इंटेलिजेंट दे आर नॉट यू नो जस्ट मतलब कुछ पता ही नहीं है दे नो एवरी थिंग बट एंड आई डोट वॉन्ट मेक असम्स टू बट आई एम वरीड के वाई आर वी नॉट चेंजिंग दिस दिस यू नो डिस्कोर्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कम टू लाइक ए सेंट्रल पॉइंट एंड आई एम ट्राइंग माई बेस्ट टू टू डू सो टू मेक थिंग्स यू नो टू टू बी वेरी रैशनल इन द वे दर आई आई टॉक अबाउट थिंग्स आई एक्सपेक्ट अदर्स टू डू सो राइट आई वॉन्ट पीपल टू ऑल्सो कम टू यू नो टू मेक दैट यू नो स्टेप राइट वे वी एक्चुअली कम टू सेंट्रल स्टेज एंड वी अग्री ऑन सर्टन थिंग्स बट अगर हमारे डिस्कोर्स का स्टार्ट एंड यही है कि यू नो आई एक्यूज यू ऑफ वन थिंग एंड यू एक्यूज ऑफ मी राइट और जब 
पता चल जाए कि यार यू नो वट आई फाउंड आउट कैर आई वॉज रॉन्ग एंड देन यू गो साइलेंट ऑन थिंग्स दैन ऑफकोर्स वे नॉट गो नो यू नो मूव ऑन एंड इट्स नॉट जस्ट यू नो द लेफ्ट आपने जो वो प्रो ड्रॉ किया है इट्स नॉट जस्ट द लेफ्ट आई वुड से मैनी मुस्लिम्स टू मैनी मुस्लिम्स टू दे दे ऑल्सो आर इन दिकॉज देर मुस्लिम आर ऑन द लेफ्ट एज वेल इट्स मैनी राइट विंगर्स टू कंजर्वेटिव आई थिंक दी इशू इज विद दैम एज वेल राइट बिकॉज दे आर स्टक इन दैट रिएक्शनरी मोड राइट um you would see you'd find a lot of muslim well, pakistani conservatives who would say ki we should not read anything about al ghazali from western sources even though wahan pe jo recent research is ho rahi hai i think they are actually changing the paradigm mm. and i think we should take advantage of that we mm. are not producing good like intellectual output to be very honest in the muslim mm. world aur uski wajah hai and wo wajah religion nahi hai wajah social hai political hai economical hai right i think that just to bring one more point to the to, the, to this uh, discussion wo ye hai ki द प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ पाकिस्तान इकोनॉमिक लिहाज से आप देख लें इट्स नॉट जस्ट प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ पाकिस्तान दीज आर द प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ थर्ड वर्ल्ड कंट्रीज अगर आप इकोनॉमिकली प्रॉस्परस कंट्रीज को देखें अगेन इकोनॉमिकली प्रॉस्परस कंट्रीज वो हैं जहाँ पर वी आर सींग दिस फ्लरिशिंग इंटेलेक्चुअल ट्रेडिशन वगैरह ऑफ वेस्टर्न या ईस्टर्न अगर आप उन ममालिक को देखें जहाँ पर विच आर इकोनॉमिकल प्रॉस्परस इट्स ओनली नॉर्थ अमेरिका एंड नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न यूरोप विद फ्यू एक्सेप्शन लाइक न्यूजीलैंड एंड ऑस्ट्रेलिया वट अबाउट साउथ अमेरिका एज अ होल वट अबाउट ईस्टर्न यूरोप एज अ होल वट अबाउट द इंटायर कॉन्टिनेंट ऑफ अफ्रीका अफ्रीका एज अ होल एंड एशिया विद एक्सेप्शन ऑफ चाइना लेकिन वहाँ पर डिक्टेटरशिप है सो दैट्स नॉट गुड थिंग या सिंगापुर में सिंगापुर में इट्स डिक्टेटरशिप सो इट्स नॉट गुड थिंग तो जब हम इन ममालिक को देखते हैं इट सीम्स टू मी के 95 परसेंट नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इज जस्ट इकोनॉमिकली डिप्रेस्ड वहाँ पर इस तरह कोई आपको वो अच्छा वहाँ साउथ अमेरिका के अगर आप एग्जांपल देख लें इट्स एन एंटायर सेंट्रल अमेरिका भी पीपल आर नॉट फोर्स्ड टू यू नो यू नो वुमेन आर नॉट फोर्स टू वेयर बुरकस देर यू विल फाइंड अलॉट ऑफ वेमेन एम्पावरमेंट देर आई थिंक सिमिलर केसेज विद सर्टन अफ्रीकन कंट्रीज एज वेल तो रिलीजन वहाँ पर प्रॉब्लम नहीं है राइट रिलीजन रिलीजियस एक्सट्रीमिज्म बट वी डोंट सी द यू नो द ब्राइट फ्यूचर दैट इज यूजली पोर्ट्रेड इन पाकिस्तान वो कहते हैं कि फाइन इफ़ यू अडॉप्ट सेकुलरिज्म इफ़ यू अडॉप्ट लिबरलिज्म इफ यू रिस्पेक्ट वेमेंस राइट्स इफ यू रिस्पेक्ट ह्यूमन राइट्स थिंग्स विल गो वेल बट यू हैव इंटायर कॉन्टिनेंट्स दैट डू रिस्पेक्ट वेमेंस राइट्स वहाँ पर यू नो यू विल सी वेमेन एम्पावरमेंट एज वेल आई मीन आई फील आई लाइक टू इंटरजेक्ट हेयर बिकॉज दिस कैन बी कंस्ट्रूड इन इन द रॉन्ग वे आई फील लाइक the problem here is not women's rights um because there is a, there is a lot of work on women's rights that's been done in indonesia and malaysia and yes. and even in the middle east the problem is women's rights as driven and defined by the western uh, global north yeah as defined by or 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 as used by let's say the american uh, state defines what women's rights are yeah and then they project that all over the world that is the problem yeah my, my problem with, with particularly with the discourse around gender has become ke you're either with women or against them this i ye american style hai ke you're either with us or against us either you agree to everything we say yeah or you are completely against uh, us right yeah. that is just something that i just don't understand up main growing up liberal tha meri thought ye thi ke yaar tang nazri ko dur karo discussion karo discourse karo aur phir darmiyan mein ek rasta nikalo right yeah. यू कैन नॉट से कि आप कम्प्लीटली फ्लिप करो एक कम्प्लीट डिफरेंट थाट से आए हुए और कम्प्लीटली नई थाट लेके अब आप जिंदगी गुजारना शुरू करो दैट इज जस्ट गोइंग टू क्रिएट के ऑस इन सोसाइटी इट्स इट हैज टू बी एवोल्यूशनरी माई प्रॉब्लम इज विद वेमेंस राइट्स पर्टिकुलरली नेरेटिव ये बन गया हुआ है कि इस्लाम एंड इस्लामिक स्टेट्स आर अगेंस्ट वेमेंस राइट्स मेरे एक्सपीरियंस में ना मैं जब दो लोगों को लड़ते देख रहा होता ना फेमिनिज्म के ऊपर तो अगर मैं उनको पाकिस्तान में अगर मैं उनको बिठाऊँ ना मैं कहूँ कि यार तुम्हें औरतों की जायदाद से मसला है वो कहेंगे कि हाँ उनको जायदाद मिलनी चाहिए पाकिस्तान में नहीं मिल दी जाती तो मैं हरासमेंट का मसला है दोनों कहेंगे कि हाँ हरासमेंट होती है गलत होती है नहीं होनी चाहिए यू गेट माई पॉइंट आप लिटरली ब्रेक इट डाउन एंड आज देम एवरी थिंग एंड देवी लग रही ऑन इट या सो देन यू बिगिन टू एज एज सम वन हु सेटिंग देयर इन द सेंटर यू बिगिन टू रियलाइज के यार मसला तो तुम्हारा सियासत का है मसला तुम्हारा ये चाहते तुम सेम चीज़ हो लेकिन तुम कह रहे हो कि नहीं मेरे लीडर के स्टाइल होनी चाहिए और तुम कहते हो मेरे लीडर इन दे इफ यू थिंक अबाउट इट राइट लाइक इट्स नॉट लीडर इन पाकिस्तानी कॉन्टेक्स बट इट्स लीडर इन द वे दैट यू परसीव इट्स इट्स हाउ यू थिंक दैट ऑल थिंग्स वेस्ट आर सुप्रीम आर सिविलाइज वो करते हैं सिविलाइज वर्ल्ड ऑर्डर फ्री वर्ल्ड ऑर्डर वो आपके दिमाग में उन्होंने ये डाला है बार बार के जी लीडर ऑफ द फ्री वर्ल्ड वॉट डिफाइन the american leader to be the leader of the free world yeah. right who who said that's the leader who said that there is a the rule based order of the world who defined those rules 
were we sitting there and talking about the rules when they were being made mm. right and why do, are those rules so incredibly arbitrary that democracy is great as long as that dem- that the dictator is your ally uh you know i mean ah, good point it 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 just keeps on going and so i want to sort of converge the conversation now towards this yeah. um you 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 study the history particularly in the cost uh, in the context of islamic history um but if you were to identify apne bhi khud apne usme bola ki you know this is a very specific economic elite of the world that mm-hmm. is driving the narrative and everybody else just sort of has to deal with it mm-hmm. um what what do you think gave rise to uh oh, right, right. this 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 sort of uh, western world order as we mm-hmm. see it today personally i think we're now at a very interesting inflection point where the world is changing and it's going to radically change in the coming years mm-hmm. um and 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 the the economic and the political center of gravity is going to aggressively keep on moving towards the east yeah. where it existed up until 4 centuries ago and then it just went west but in your opinion what do you think gave rise to to the western world order um and how would you differentiate between the western world order and the eastern world order right right so um i really love this question i love talking about this so um so first thing first when uh, we when we say the west what do we mean by it let's just define things let's let's make the water crystal clear so we know what we're talking about so when we say the west it usually we usually refer to northwestern europe plus north america so us canada right so when we say the rise of the west we talk about okay, how you northwestern european reg- uh, countries jo hai like germany france england uh you know dutch right the the, uh, the netherlands how they dominated the world right so 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 when, so when i said the west i'm talking about northwestern europe right just for, uh, the second point is because we're talking about europe and one misconception that people have is to consider europe as one homogenous category geographical category but that's not true the category of europe jo aaj hai it's only 200 years old it was popularized in the 18th century by fi- some like figures like rousseau for example um he popularized it and there were other figures as well aur wo iski wajah ye thi ki because the catholic church ki jo power thi it was declining so they wanted to replace something with christendom right to so christendom to wo weak hoti gayi so they just replaced europe with that right so it's a new thing it hasn't existed aur agar aap नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न यूरोप को कंपेयर करें साउदर्न यूरोप के साथ दे आर कल्चरली मतलब कल्चरली हिस्टोरिकली दे आर टोटली डिफरेंट राइट और ईस्ट को वेस्ट के साथ कंपेयर करेंगे यूरोप दे आर टोटली डिफरेंट नॉर्थ को साउथ के साथ सेम थिंग इन तो दैट्स द फर्स्ट थिंग वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड के वन वी से यूरोप ने दुनिया को डोमिनेट किया हुआ यू नो टॉक अबाउट नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न यूरोप नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट यू नो बुलगारिया राइट यू टॉकिंग अबाउट इंग्लैंड फ्रांस जर्मनी और इस तरह के हिस्टोरिकली भी दीज व कंट्रीज दर वर कॉलोनाइजिंग एवरीथिंग तो Now let's just go back like 3000 years into the past mm-hmm. okay so um see there are three things that makes the west the west right ek to hai the greek tradition uh the roman laws right so roman empire and christianity agar hum greeks ki baat kare to if you open uh, you, you have a beautiful map over here so mm-hmm. you can you know just look at it so if you look at the expedition of alexander mm-hmm. it starts in you know greece yeah uh Macedon and then uh he invades per, uh, Egypt and then he takes over the Persian empire mm-hmm. and then his empire extends to the Indus river yahan par hai Alexander the Great never never invaded France or Germany he never invaded England or conquered it right to jo greek tradition ki jo archaeological remains hain right because after alexander uske jo uh, generals the they also ruled here for a longer period of time if you look at the uh, archaeological remains of the greek tradition you will find it here in the east mm. in central asia so south asia uh not in europe not in northwestern europe or um is it like if you look at the roman empire see rome was a republic it became an empire when it conquered egypt right or even though it conquered britannia us zamane britannia and you know the gaul and other jo baki jo mamalik the spain bhi their entire orientation was towards the east matlab jo persian empire the sassanids because the east the asia right the sand heart of asia asia the, the east was the place of competition of civilization and of luxury as well right or if you talk about christianity to so christianity was born in in the middle east literally so the point is ke 
जो थ्री एलिमेंट्स हैं जो हमें बताए गए हैं फ्रॉम योर सेंट्रिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ हिस्ट्री वो ये है कि वी हैव द ग्रीट ट्रेडिशन रोमन लॉज एंड क्रिश्चनिटी दैट्स व्हाट मेक्स अस द वेस्ट इसको अगर आप हिस्टोरिकल देखें ऑल ऑफ दम आर एक्चुअली आइर ओरिएंटेड टूवर्ड्स द ईस्ट या फाउंड इन द ईस्ट तो इसमें एक बुक है द सिल्क रोड्स अ न्यू हिस्ट्री ऑफ द वर्ल्ड बाई पीटर फ्रेंक ओपन ओके वन इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग दर आई वॉन्ट शेयर अबाउट दिस बुक आई थॉट अ कोर्स ऑन दिस इट वॉज फाइव लेक्चर्स कोर्स मतलब इस तरह के इट वॉज अ कोर्स ऑन दिस बुक राइट तो मैंने लेक्चर्स प्रिपेयर किए थे और प्रोफेसर फ्रेंक ओपन ऑल्सो ज्वाइंट द हियर सो आई इंटरव्यू रियलीबलिंग रिकॉर्डिंग मैंने एक गूगल क्लास रूम बनाई तो आई वॉज लाइक यू नॉट आई एम गन टीच दिस तो जो मैंने ये बोला है मैंने पोस्ट इज ऑन इंस्टाग्राम के यू नॉट प्रोफेसर फ्रेंक ओपन इज ऑल्सो ज्वाइनिंग तो everybody was saying you and i also want to join i also want to join <laughs> so i mean okay one thing just to one me uh, sort of deviate from one point one difference that i have seen in pakistan and academics that i have uh, talked to from around the world we hear that even though he's like a professor of global history at oxford उनको मैंने सिर्फ एक मैसेज किया ट्वीट में कि यू नो वट के आई एम टीचिंग दिस कॉर्स ऑन योर बुक फॉर यू लाइक टू जॉइन एंड ही सेट येस लाइक दैन एंड देन ही जॉइन इज वेल आई हैवन सीन लाइक मैंने जो एक्सपीरियंस किया है आई थिंक इन पाकिस्तान वी डोंट हैव दैट कल्चर ऑफ यू नो अ टीचर एंड अ स्टूडेंट राइट वेदर कोलेबोरेटिंग यू नो और बींग समथिंग इट्स ऑलमोस्ट डेड आई दर द स्टूडेंट इज डोंट केयर और द टीचर इज वेरी एरोगेंट दैट्स so but and so the, the silk roads that's a, one of the books that i read during uh, when i was in edwards college and i would use that book in debates a lot so i have a personal history with this book as well so i wrote a course on this book as well so mm. people can read this i highly recommend it and it's a, it's a, by the way it's an incredible book it really helps you understand the east yeah. versus west and really helps you understand particularly in the economic context of uh, where we we come from and where we potentially will be going because the yeah. natural world order is definitely oriented or s- Or, or or sort of centralized towards the east particularly asia yeah. and that book really helps drive that point home yeah to usme um uh, acha so in the silk roads acha ye silk roads kya hai the reason that the greek the romans or you know all the world jo world ke famous religions hain they were all born in the east was because because of the silk roads right jo trade routes hain so basically uh, eastern pacific se lekar like china ke bilkul shore se ye from eastern pacific till the mediterranean yahan se ek trade routes the चाइना से जो ओरिजिनेट होते हैं दोज आर लाइक टू थाउजेंड ईयर्स ओल्ड लेकिन दोज ट्रेड रूट्स दैट कनेक्ट ग्रीस एंड रोम विथ विथ सेंट्रल एशिया दोज आर लाइक थ्री थाउजेंड ईयर्स ओल्ड वेरी वेरी ओल्ड इन दैट रोमन टाइम्स में फिर चाइना ऑल्सो एंड द गेम एंड हेंस द सिल्क रोड्स तो उसकी वजह यह है कि सिविलाइजेशन वॉज बोर्न इन द ईस्ट लाइक मिस पटेमिया फोर्थ आई थिंक फोर थाउजेंड बी सी सो ऑलमोस्ट सिक्स थाउजेंड ईयर्स को इट वॉज बिकॉज इट वॉज बोर्न इन द ईस्ट यहाँ पर ट्रेड रूट्स थे द वेस्ट जिसको हम कहते हैं नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न यूरोप इट वॉज ऑलवेज एट द पेरीफ्री ऑफ द ग्लोबल ट्रेड या इस तरह सो बिकॉज देवर एट द पेरीफ्री और ना वो ट्रेड का हिस्सा थे या कुछ और बिकॉज एंड दे ऑल्सो वॉन्ट वॉन्टेड ए फेयर शेयर अबाउट द होल थिंग वॉन्ट टू जॉइन दीज ट्रेड रूट्स सो वट दे डिड दे वॉन्टेड दे यू नो बिल्ड शिप्स दैट कुड ट्रेवल यू नो टू लॉन्गर प्लेस उसकी वजह क्यों वाई डेंट दे गो थ्रू लैंड उसकी वजह यह है कि अगेन दिस वॉज समथिंग दैट professor frank ban told me in an interview he said okay if you are travel suppose you uh, if i'm in islamabad i want to go to istanbul on land every time i enter a new jurisdiction i have to give a tax mm-hmm. right or because wahan par resources kam thi states ke paas they couldn't afford it right uh, loss mein tha so what they did they mastered the seas to unhone kya kiya ki aise ships banayi which could you know ek port se you would load things mm-hmm. and then they would you know land in uh, india ya west africa wagera and then you will load things from there and then you would go back to england ya spain ya portugal right undercutting, so essentially undercutting all of the middlemen and the exactly right so what happened was ke you have portugal right portugal starts mon ko jo ships the wo is tarah cape of good hope ko cross karke and they would reach india right so the mastery of the seas unki puri jo focus thi it was on building better longer ships taaki they can travel longer and this is one of the elements of colonialism as well. मतलब उन्होंने जो न्यू वर्ल्ड को कॉलोनाइज किया इट वॉज बिकॉज द रीजन के ऑटोम डेंट डू इट बज बिकॉज उनके पास सब कुछ था दे वर ऑलरेडी एट द सेंटर ऑफ द होल ट्रेड तो दे डेंट फील द नीड यू नो दे डि नॉट फील द नीड टू यू नो हैव बोर्ड्स विच कुड ट्रावल टू न्यू वर्ल्ड मतलब वाई वुड यू डू दिस बट द रीजन दे डिड दिस वॉज बिकॉज ऑफ द होल ट्रेड थिंग तो एक तो ये था द मास्टरी ऑफ द सीज वॉज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अच्छा बिकॉज देवर एट द पेरीफ्री इट इज ऑल्सो इंपॉर्टेंट सो देवर एट द पेरीफ्री नंबर वन नंबर टू मास्टरी ऑफ द सीज नंबर थ्री वॉज जो बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है वॉर्स एंड वायलेंस नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न यूरोप में वॉर्स एंड वायलेंस उनकी अगर आप उसकी रिदम को देखें फ्रीक्वेंसी को देखें दे आर आर इट्स लाइक इनकम्पेरेबल एंड प्रोफेसर फ्रेंक मैन टॉक्स अबाउट दिस एज वेल फ्राम आई थिंक इन चैप्टर एलेवन एंड टेन तो वॉर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू हैव हंड्रेड ईयर्स वॉर एटी ईयर्स वॉर थर्टी ईयर्स वॉर वहाँ पर जो वॉर्स थे दे वर लॉन्गर 
और दे वर लाइक मतलब एक वॉर ख़त्म नहीं होती कि दूसरी वॉर शुरू हो जाती थी राइट एंड प्रोफेसर फ्रेंक पान सेस ही सज समथिंग वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग ही सज के ओनली अ यूरोपियन ऑथर वुड हैव सेड के द नेचुरल स्टेट ऑफ मैन वॉज इन अ कॉन्स्टेंट स्टेट ऑफ वायलेंस एंड ओनली अ यूरोपियन ऑथर वुड हैव बिन राइट एंड देन ही सज के फाइन एशिया में भी वॉर्स हुए थे मतलब द मोंगोल एक्सपेडिशन राइट या दी 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 राइज ऑफ इस्लाम वन मुस्लिम कॉन्कर्ड मतलब स्पेन से लेकर यू नो अंटिल चाइना लेकिन दोज पीरियड्स ऑफ कॉन्क्वेस्ट वर फॉलोड बाय लॉन्ग पीरियड्स ऑफ स्टेबिलिटी देर वॉज नो स्टेबिलिटी इन यूरोप तो दैट तो थर्ड पॉइंट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इज वॉर्स एंड वायलेंस इनहेरेंटली इट इज पार्ट ऑफ दैट सिविलाइजेशन दे आर मोर प्रोन टू वॉर्स एंड वायलेंस बिकॉज ऑफ द हिस्ट्री I would I wouldn't say that because I think it is a negative connotations about okay. you know, the, the people as well ke I would say ke so again man people ki bilkul baat nahi kar raha main civilization ki baat kar raha hu which what civilization does is again like I say modern day america americans aren't bad right but mm-hmm. we know that their establishment has waged wars against yeah, yeah. sort of libya and middle east and so mm-hmm. on um generally what I what I try to dekhe the reason why I say this is इसका काउंटर लेते हैं सो so, मुगल्स के बारे में ना ये मशहूर है कि जी वाइल यूरोप वाज डेवलपिंग इट सेल्फ द मुगल्स वर अयाश एंड आई हैव ऑलवेज फाउंड दैट टू बी ऑड कंसिडरिंग के आज हम न्यूयॉर्क जाते हैं और वहाँ पर म्यूजियम ऑफ नेचुरल हिस्ट्री और न्यूयॉर्क आर्ट म्यूजियम जाते हैं और कहते हैं वाह यार गोरे को आर्ट जिस तरह गोरा करता है ना प्रिजर्व आ तो भाई आपका भी तो यही कर रहा था ना शाहजहाँ और उस टाइम भी आपने कहा जाहिल था पागल था सो I think because there was prosperity at that time mm-hmm. um the the Mughal empire and generally the, the civilizations of the east were less prone to wars and they never took that as a as an important matrix in their power game mm-hmm. as much as the like the Europe had a lot more survival of the fittest going on if that makes sense yeah that's true right and so it they were it, they inherently knew aap flat land mein hote hai na in a tropical environment जहाँ पर आपको बारिशें होती रहती हैं और चावल उगता रहता है ठीक mm-hmm. है तो आपका दिल नहीं करता लड़ने का पाकिस्तान है ना इंडस के लेफ्ट राइट तो इंडस के लेफ्ट राइट ने कभी जंगे नहीं की mm-hmm. इंडस के लेफ्ट राइट में कभी उस पहाड़ी इलाके के किसी बंदे ने आके हमारे पास आए हमने कहा यार अनाज लो और आगे जाओ लिटरली <laughs> अगर आप पाकिस्तानी हिस्ट्री देखें इंडस की हिस्ट्री देखें इंडस ने कभी ना लड़ने की कोशिश की है uh-huh. इंडस ने कहा कि यार भाई हमारे पास बहुत है तू हमारे से थोड़ा सा ले और साथ आगे जाओ और जाके कॉन्कर कर ठीक है या उस तरफ से कोई आ गया और उसको हमने बोला कि तू अफगानिस्तान चला जा कभी अरबी आ गया कभी अफगान आ गया कभी परिजन आ गया कभी सेंट्रल एशियन आ गया and that's largely because at that time we had the prosperity uh, that allowed for us to be that way uh, because hamara pet bhara bhara hota tha because hame tension nahi lekin jo pahadi hai na agar for example jisko pata hai ki raat ko jab thand hogi na agar mehnat nahi ki to bhai bahar mar jayenge hmm wo phir by design uski survival of the fittest uski wo kehte hai na eye of the tiger uski wo bahut strong hogi to that is the context in which mera zati khayal ye hai ki जो यूरोपियन पर्टिकुलरली नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न जहाँ पे एक्सट्रीम क्लाइमेट्स हैं जहाँ पर सर्वाइव करने के लिए आपको अगर आप मेहनत नहीं करोगे अगर आप अपने आप की इंश्योर नहीं करोगे देर इज अगेन मैं थोड़ा सा दो मिनट के लिए कह रहा हूँ कि मॉरलिटी को दो मिनट की पर साइड एंड ऑब्जेक्टिवली ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द सिचुएशन इफ यू डोंट फाइट फॉर द फाइनाइट रिसोर्स यू विल डाई एंड सो दैट विल बी जो जिसे कहते हैं ना कि एक सर्वाइवल इंस्टिंक्ट हमेशा एक बिल्ली के अंदर भी होती है वो पैदा होती है ना अगर उसको वहाँ से आप जुदा भी कर लें तो देर आर सर्टन थिंग्स दैट शी विल ऑलवेज डू बिकॉज इट इज पार्ट ऑफ देयर वो सो दैट इज द कॉन्टेक्स्ट दैट बिफोर एनी वन कैंसल्स मी बट एनी वे सॉ यू आर सेंग या सो सो जो फर्स्ट थ्री यू नो इन्ग्रीडियंट्स दैट वॉज नीड सो फर्स्ट वॉज के दे वर एट द पेरेफ्री राइट एंड आई थिंक इट्स ट्रू के यू नो हर जोग्राफी में अगर आप यू नो इन्वायरमेंट डज अफेक्ट यू अलॉट सोसाइटीज राइट तो दैट वॉज ट्रू एंड आई थिंक इट इट डज इनको हम इसको हम फर्स्ट एलिमेंट में डाल सकते हैं राइट के दे वर एट द पेरेफ्री और उसकी वजह थी द सेकंड पॉइंट वाज द मास्टरी ऑफ द सीज एंड द फर्स्ट लेड टू द सेकंड एंड द थर्ड वाज वायलेंस एंड आई थिंक द द थर्ड इज बिकॉज ऑफ द फर्स्ट टू राइट तो उसके बाद ये वायलेंस का वो हो गया अच्छा नाउ यू हैव लॉ शिप्स दैन ट्रेवल टू यू नो फार अवे रीजन राइट और आपके पास वेपन्स जो हैं अच्छा हेयर्स थिंग वन लाइक द रीज़न के डिस्ट्रक्टिव वेपन्स अगर आप उसकी तारीख देखें दे हैव एक्चुअली केम आउट ऑफ दिस दिस रीजन इज उसकी एक वजह है जब वन नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न यूरोपियंस लाइक पोर्टुगीज वगैरह वन दे रीच्ड द न्यू वर्ल्ड वहाँ के जो लोग थे द नेटिव अमेरिकन्स उनके पास जो फाइटिंग टूल्स थी दे वर एक्चुअली ब्रॉन्स एज थाउजेंड्स ऑफ ईयर्स ओल्ड और उनके पास क्या था मतलब द फ्रेंच 
उनके पास बिकॉज ऑफ ईयर्स ऑफ सेंचुरीज ऑफ फाइटिंग अगेंस्ट द ऑटोमन या अमंग्स दम सेल्स दे हैड सोफिस्टिकेट मतलब उसके पास राइफल्स वगैरह जो भी थी दैट्स वाई दे दे कुड लाइक यू नो जस्ट वाइप आउट इंटायर बेसिकली सोसाइटीज तो अच्छा वो ये नहीं था कि ये इस तरह नहीं था कि दोज नेटिव अमेरिकन वर सम लाइक अनसिविलाइज दे हैड अ सोफिस्टिकेटेड सोसाइटी और टैक्स सिस्टम था वगैरह वगैरह दी ओनली थिंग इन विच दे वर लाइक नॉट सोफिस्टिकेटेड या नॉट एडवांस या डेवलप्ड वॉज वेपन्स वेपन्स ऑफ यू नो वेपन्स ऑफ डिस्ट्रक्शन राइट सो राइफल्स या कैनल्स वगैरह तो तो सो नाउ यू हैव शिप्स एंड नाउ यू हैव गुड वेपन्स वो नॉर्थ अमेरिका में जाते हैं एंड देन दे बेसिकली यू नो जो वहाँ से जो प्लेंडर आया ऑल दो स्पलेंडर जेम्स गोल्ड डायमंड देवर एक्चुअली यू नो शावर्ड ऑन द बैंक्स ऑफ इंग्लैंड या पोर्टुगल एंड देर आर गुड अकाउंट्स ऑफ दैट इज वेल कि वो किस तरह था कि मतलब इस तरह यू नो जो डायमंड्स थी उनके इस तरह मीनार बनाए हुए थे सो बहुत जो कंटेम्प्रेरी टाइम्स में जो लोगों ने इस डिस्क्रिप्शन दी थी फिर उसके बाद अच्छा सो नाउ दे स्टार्ट कॉलोनाइजिंग डिफरेंट रीजन सो दे कॉलोनाइज न्यू वर्ल्ड दे कॉलोनाइज अफ्रीका दे कोडन डायरेक्टली कॉलोनाइज इंडिया बिकॉज इंडिया ऑबियसली उस टाइम में आई मीन आई रेड इन एनआर की के औरंगजेब एट वन पॉइंट औरंगजेब हैड लाइक फोर हंड्रेड थाउजेंड सोल्जर्स लाइक अ स्टैंडिंग आर्मी सो ऑबियस दे कोडन यू नो मैस अराउंड विद पीपल लेकिन इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग वहाँ पर भी ये थी कि दी नवाब ऑफ बंगाल सेट समथिंग वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग अबाउट द ब्रिटिश जब वो वहाँ पर आए वो कह रहे हैं कि नो मतलब किसी कौम के लोगों ने यहाँ पर आके किले नहीं बनवाए Hmm. ये जैसे आगे इन्होंने अपने अपने लिए किले बनवाए और फोर्टिफिकेशन की अगर आप हिस्ट्री देखें तो वन ऑफ द थिंग्स आर वी लव अबाउट इट्स लाइक फोर्ट्स राइट तो यू नो द होल गेम ऑफ थ्रोन सीरीज बाकी जो इस तरह सीरीज हुए दे हैव बीन मेड इन आयरलैंड या स्कॉटलैंड वहाँ पर जो इंग्लैंड में अगर आप फोर्ट्रेस देखें दे आर लाइक मैसिव लाइक दे आर मैसिव उसकी वजह यह है बिकॉज एट वहाँ की लोगों की मैंटालिटी उस वक्त इस तरह थी कि यू हैव टू डिफेंड योर सेल्फ डिफेंड योर सेल्फ एट एवरी पॉइंट सो दैट्स वाई यू सी अ मैसिव डिफरेंस बिटवीन फोर्टिफिकेशन इज वेल एंड दैट्स वाई वन दे कॉलोनाइज इंडिया द फर्स्ट थिंग दे डिड वॉज टू बिल्ड अ फोर्ट अ स्ट्रॉग फोर्ट्रेस जो इस तरह आसानी से पेनिट्रेट नहीं हो सकता तो ओके सो नाउ वन दे स्टार्ट द होल कॉलोनियल वेंचर उससे हुआ यह कि सर प्लस वेल्थ आ गई वेस्ट में राइट और The only reason, see, you can only have universities and intellectual activities when इस तरह का tradition तभी आ सकता है when you have surplus wealth. Right. right. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Yeah. Essentially. Exactly. Maslow's hierarchy. So when, so because they had uh, surplus wealth, they built monuments, they built church, मतलब uh, universities, colleges, वगैरह वगैरह. They did all, all that. उस time में जो scientific advancements भी हो रही थी, they had a lot to do with violence and wars as well. So for mm-hmm. example. Some of the most important works of Newton, Euler, and Galileo was actually to understand the trajectory of projectiles, so that they can understand the causes of deviation in artillery, right? And the Oski, another example of again science and uh, military expedition or military in general is medicine and military. So one of the reasons that vaccines were invented that time was because the British soldiers, who West Africa may deploy, were they they would die after two three weeks. Hmm. So they had to come up with like a new invention. So war. F- वॉर फ्यूल्ड साइंटिफिक एडवांसमेंट मतलब ये कहना कि आउट ऑफ नो वेयर आउट ऑफ वैक्यूम न्यू टू नॉज बॉर्न ए थॉट यू नो वॉट लेट मी जस्ट डू सम मैथ्स इट्स इन सेंस यू एवरी सिंगल थिंग दैट हैपन्स इन हिस्ट्री हैपन्स इन हिस्ट्री राइट नथिंग हैपन्स इन इन वैक्यूम अच्छा उसके बाद फिर ओके नाउ यू हैव यूनिवर्सिटीज़ उसके बाद यू हैव द रेनसा अच्छा फिर रेनसा में नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न यूरोप में क्या हुआ दिस वॉज एट द पेरेफ्री द ग्रीक्स हैड नथिंग टू डू विद इट द रोमन्स हैड बेरली एनी थिंग टू डू विद इट दे वॉर एन ओरियन टूवर्ड्स इट in the renaissance what they did was that they just uh, you know tried to recreate the past pero ne kya ki you know what we are the heirs of the tradition we are the heirs of the roman laws and whatever whatever and so in the in the book the silk roads uh, pir franco pan says ke if a roman citizen w- was born in the renaissance period and he saw portuguese ya spanish ya british वो अपने आप को उस रोमन एम्पायर के ट्रेडिशन के वो बना अलग इस तरह मान रहे हैं कि वी आर दी आयर्स ऑफ द ट्रेडिशन ही सेट कि ही वुड बी शॉक्ड बाई इट लाइक अटली शॉक्ड तो रहने सा पे वो हा उसके बाद पे इनलाइटमेंट का पीरियड आया सो इन द इनलाइटमेंट अच्छा अलॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव दिस अगेन मिसकनसेप्शन वो ये है कि इनलाइटमेंट केम आउट ऑफ यूरोप फ्राम यूरोप एंड फ्राम यूरोप इट्स टू अदर पार्ट्स द वर्ल्ड बट दैट्स नॉट ट्रू द एज ऑफ इनलाइटमेंट वॉज द एज ऑफ डिबेट्स और इसके बारे में जो अच्छी बुक है मैं रिसेंटली पढ़ रहा हूँ और अभी पढ़ रहा हूँ इट्स कॉल्ड द डॉन ऑफ एवरीथिंग अ न्यू हिस्ट्री ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटी तो उसमें जो चैप्टर फर्स्ट और सेकंड है चैप्टर टू इज कॉल्ड विकेट लिबर्टीज एंड पीपल कैन रीड दिस इट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग इट 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 टॉक्स अबाउट दिस इनलाइटमेंट एज एज वेल जब बेसिकली नॉर्थ अमेरिकन और यूरोपियंस के दरमियान जो डिस्कशन हो रही थी बिकॉज द एज ऑफ इनलाइटमेंट वॉज द एज ऑफ डिबेट्स और द रीजन के नॉर्थ यूरोपियंस वर एक्साइटेड अबाउट न्यू आइडियाज वॉज बिकॉज देवर बेरली कमिंग आउट ऑफ द शैकल्स ऑफ कैथोलिक चर्च 
So that's why they were, you know, very interested about new ideas and yeah, new forms of governance and, you know, new economic systems, political systems. That's why someone like Leibniz openly said that we should adopt Chinese statecraft, Chinese, uh, you know, forms of governance, right? So in age of debates, mein, three things were highly debated and highly contested. First was tolerance, freedom and equality, right? Um, to po- just to focus on tolerance for a second, the Enlightenment philosophers, they, uh, you know, took motivation from the Ottoman Empire when it came to, uh, you know, tolerance of different sects. Because someone like John Locke would say, okay, you know what, we should tolerate different Christian sects. But he didn't extend this gratitude to, you know, atheists, yeah, Muslims, yeah, Jews, right? Uh, but someone like Henry Oldenburg said, okay, look, look, take a look at the Ottoman Empire. They allow everyone, whether you're a Christian, you're a atheist, you're a Muslim of a different sect, you're a Jew, whatever, they would allow you so long as you pay the jizya, right? So this big book hai, it's called uh, John Locke, Toleration and Early Enlightenment Culture. So this Henry Oldenburg quote, that's on page 393, if I'm not wrong, 394. And there's like Bakayda chapters, hai, which talks about how the Enlightenment era, in uh, that era, mein, they, people, uh, you know, they got inspiration from the Ottoman Empire when it came to tolerance. Or I can go on different books as well, but I think this will suffice. I think in terms of books, if you can, I, if, if I can request you to do one thing, just yeah. make a list of okay. every major book that you think is, is was, was most monumental in, in your understanding of a lot of this. Uh-huh. Just send me that list and we'll make sure we'll put it out in the description below. So that, I mean, I'm personally very interested that I buy that book collection and okay. slowly read up on it. I'm sure the viewer would be as well. Perfect. Uh, so we'll do that. Okay. So yeah, so you have, so uh, again, the age of enlightenment was the age of debates, right? Something happened in Europe, out of Europe, and from Europe, it spread to other parts of the world. Europe was, you know, in the words of Professor Frank, it was a late to the whole drama. But the rest of the all they were already well-versed in different traditions and, you know, different forms of governments, etc. But Northwestern Europe was late to the party. And so they were very excited about different political, you know, models, etc. So, um, so yeah, so this was the age of debates. It wasn't that, you know, Western, you know, people just woke up one day and, you know, they decided to have democracy. Achha, um one other point, again, it's also related with misconceptions, was that, on the topic of individualism. So people understand that individualism is like an intellectual project, like people, you can just assume that you're an individual. But that's actually not true. Ek, again, another book, it's called The Weirdest People in the World. Uh, I've actually brought this book in my back as well. So The Weirdest People in the World, how the West became psychologically peculiar and, econo- and particularly prosperous. So in book, mein, uh, Joseph Heinrich argues that individualism emerged Individualism, first of all, was a uh, political, it was a cultural and a religious project. So, for example, what is it? Human beings, we live in kinship societies, kinship uh, institutions, right? Tribes, clans, etc. But what happened in the Western world was in 9th century or 8th century, the church banned cousin marriages. So, out to 6th cousin, you, you cannot marry. 6th cousin, ke baad, sixth cousin ke baad you can marry, right? So, us ye ke wits, and this was in effect for centuries, right? So what happened was that the kinship, kinship institutions, thi, those institutions devo- like dissolved over time, right? And people became somewhat like proto-individuals at that time. Matab, you were expected to move away from your, uh, you know, a village to an urban place, or wahabar you had to find a job to live to live alone. This was a unique thing. There, this didn't have. You won't find this in other parts of the world, uh, specifically the Muslim world. Like in here, you like. And by the 16th century, the reason that Reformation, acha. Protestantism is very important to this. In Protestantism, what Martin Luther said, ke, uh, you know, you, uh, every single individual boy or girl should understand the Bible by himself or herself without the need to resort to any authority. This was unique, like uh, very, very unique. Like it was against Catholic Church, obviously, but also other traditions as well, right? Um, so the reason that this idea, this radical idea at that time was so widely accepted in Northwestern Europe was because the, the social formation was already like ready for it, ready to accept this. Because of the ban on you know, cousin marriages, people were already proto-individualists, you know, uh, individuals. And the reason that uh, something like Protestantism was accepted was because, you know, uh, the people were already, already like ready for it, like ripe for it. So. You have individualism, then you have those societies, um, that, you know, and it all has to do with wars and expeditions at other regions of the world. Or enlightenment age was made possible because of those expeditions, right? If they plunder or ideas, plunder with plunder, people were bringing ideas in Europe. So if they don't have expeditions, then they don't have ideas here. 
So that's so that's how you know the West has came to dominate the world. It's it's a very recent phenomena, 300 years old, um, and it was also quite an unexpected one. Like nobody expected that you know the the Northwestern Europe would dominate the world, or that's why there is a bit of luck and chance as well in the whole matlab dominance. Right. So that. do you think uh, it, it having now studied all of that, do you think that dominance will sustain in the way that the world has now evolved over time, mm-hmm. um, and it continues to evolve? acha about current affairs i am totally like clueless so okay. but one one thing that i mean reading by reading history i can say okay um i don't think that it will sustain okay uh, because i mean agar hum recently dekhe because of again the the wars are emerging again in europe again current affairs mein i'm really Look, so, so there is a current affairs hoti jo political hoti i generally don't like that because uh-huh. that is very individual and that's very i mean it's like a drama right it's mm-hmm. it's a episode after episode things are changing mm-hmm. um but i just feel like a uh, utilizing history you, it's very it's much easier to project the future not the immediate future because immediate future requires current affairs but you uh-huh. can begin to extrapolate and say ke yaar 20 saal mein largely mujhe ye direction nazar aa rahi hai mm-hmm. dermiyan mein i don't care players kaun se honge i don't clear kya hoga yeah, but because in my experience large bodies tend to behave very similarly chahe uske andar individual kuch bhi kar rahe ho right mm-hmm. and so in that context you know mm-hmm. what do you think okay, okay. Uh, good point uh, so i have so there's, there's one thing that i'll share um so you know the the interview that i had with professor frankopan to the first question tha jo maine pucha wo ye tha ke professor what do you think will happen in asia in africa in the next 15 years or 20 years to what he said was that um First of all, he said that the decisions that we make about climate change in the next 15 years will determine history for like the next thousand years, right? And that's what climate scientists say. Um, and climate change will badly affect, you know, countries like Turkey, Middle East, Central Asia, South Asia, etc., etc., right? Um, so in the future, what I think, okay, I, and this is my personal opinion, but I think um, because of climate change, again, to give one fact about climate change, so. सब से हरण अफ्रीका में जितनी वाटर कंजम्पन होती है दैट्स लेस दैन द वाटर कंजम्पन इन न्यू यॉर्क सिटी अलोन राइट इज अज डिस्पैरिटी तो बिकॉज ऑफ क्लाइमेट चेंज बिकॉज ऑफ दोज मतलब फॉर एग्जाम्पल नेचुरल डिजास्टर्स उसकी वजह से देर विल बी पोलिटिकल यू नो एग्जैक्टली अनरेस्ट देर विल बी सिविल सिविल वॉर्स एज वेल और उसकी वजह यह है कि बिकॉज वन यू हैव पीपल फाइटिंग फॉर रिसोर्स लिटरली और जस्ट ड्राइंग ऑफ नेचुरल कॉजेज मतलब फ्लड्स जो अभी रिसेंटली फ्लड्स आए थे दैट लिटरली लाइक शुक द कंट्री राइट तो बिकॉज ऑफ क्लाइमेट चेंज think there will be political unrest or us political unrest ki wajah se you will have fascist you know leaders who will promise a brighter you know bigger future for the people or obviously people are hopeless and they they want something they want to get out of something they will actually fall for it so so that will lead to more civil wars more instability abhi recently iran aur afghanistan ke darmiyan jo pani bhi ladai ho rahi hai that this water crisis that's going to get worse in the next 15 years so while i do not read a lot about okay, what is what is what china is doing yeah what pakistan is doing even pakistani politics i know nothing about it yeah. but what i can say about future more like broader scale is that and and i hate to say this but i think things will things will get a lot worse uh. because of water crisis because of uh, you know floods um, we will have we will see a lot of political unrest and civil maybe civil wars as well uh, economic wo to aise hi hai i think this will actually get worse as well so this is this uh. is again i asked him professor so and he told me this okay uh, climate change climate change is like the biggest factor mm-hmm. here that will determine most matlab it will literally determine the next 1000 years for us right. as a human species so it's more of a, like a sobering experience as well right when you think uh, matlab life is not limited to what x country is doing yeah what this guy i think when you think in such a broader terms you have a different sort of experience okay you know what these petty issues these political conflicts yeah. you know wako wo itna na ke again we existential crisis type ho jata hai ke yaar main kitna useless irrelevant i'm such a <laughs> such a small dot in such a yeah. huge chaotic world um we're at the 1 hour 45 minute mark and oh, uh, i didn't I, expect this <laughs> i did not expect this either but uh, but i'm going to wrap this up yeah. uh, this was an incredible um and extremely insightful conversation मैंने स्टार्ट में ये बात बोली थी मैं फिर से बोलूँगा जो अभी तक देख रहा है और सुन रहा है दिस इज दिस केट इज ट्वेंटी ईयर्स ओल्ड इट्स जस्ट फैसिनेटिंग बिकॉज वॉट्स एक्साइटिंग इज 
what you'll be doing over the next decade yeah. um and i hope you're doing something useful with that mind of yours inshallah um thank you so much for coming in and sharing all that insight uh i'm going to ask you one last question sort of that data zone to uh, what i just asked you as well yeah. um i asked all of my guests and so would love to hear your insight on that as well how do you see pakistan of 2050 27 years from now uh when you'd probably be what 57 uh 47 oh. 47 um how do you see pakistan of 2050 knowing what you know now seeing what you've seen well uh, i am hopeful uh, in the sense that um um again in one aspect to education ka hai because i'm concerned about this what i see again just in on on the point of education um i see pakistan producing at least good intellectual output to say the least baki with regards to economic inflation hai ya political instability hai i have no idea about this but i think the, i am hopeful about pakistan i think that a lot of good will come out of it i think this crisis period may be for the next like for, for the next few years but in the long run regardless of you know how things are today i am hopeful that things will get better specifically the the, the thing that i'm personally focused on education reforming education that's my my whole thing my right. my entire existence on twitter is because of reforming education i don't have the full picture okay, how things will be but i do have the rough sketch and okay, and, and, and you do believe that with the with relevant amount of energy being put by an individual like yourself yeah, yeah. you can mobilize a community that could eventually mobilize a uh, let's say an industry and you may be able to bring about that change in the long 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 uh, run uh, yeah, you, you're hopeful about that, about that. Yeah. Uh, you're doing computer science right now yeah computer and science. i am sciences what semester are you in fifth fifth semester how most people I? don't believe when i say i'm a computer science student <laughs> but that's because they haven't you know seen the other side of my life uh, understandably and, and and how's that going Oh incredible I love it I'm learning mach- my machine learning par raha hu uh, right. uh, self studying uh, but that's my whole thing for the next hybrid intelligence if you mm. guys are interested you can check this out that's my whole thing right. uh, we basically you basically combine the best capabilities of humans with the best capabilities of computer science right uh, oh, sorry uh, artificial intelligence right in order to create a more stable future that's that's the whole thing do you think you'll stay in pakistan or do you think you'll eventually yeah, yeah, yeah. i actually want to stay in pakistan i don't want to move abroad for studies ke liye me for like masters degree i'll go for studies i feel like when, once you go you don't really come back right because uh, logical progression hai aap masters ke liye jaate ho you you got the you go for your masters because you want the best education mm-hmm. um but when you've got the best education and you know the application for that education is there uh-huh. uh so it's as much as you don't uh you know yeah, it's, it's it's basic problem solving hai ke yaar mm-hmm. where can i provide maximum value to wo main maximum value ab yahan par aoge to aap koi random kaam kar rahe hoge wahan par aap bahut zyada value provide kar sakte ho oh okay oh that that makes sense that makes sense chale yeah. yeah. um yeah. sir thank you so much for coming in and sharing all that thank insight thank you so much for having um i hope again i'm i'm saying this again one of the one of the most favorite uh, conversations i've had recently i just hope that you're able to utilize this mind uh to do something Inshallah. useful um and bring about valuable change thank you so much thank you so much for having me and for all of you guys thank you so much for watching agar aapke episode pasand aaya to dost yaar sath zarur share kariyega mujhe niche comment section mein aake zarur bataiyega what are your thoughts on uh, a lot of things that uh, shesh has shared um there is a comprehensive list of books down in the description below check that out galiyan dene se pehle pehle fact check kare <laughs> and if there is something that you feel like uh, um, you know is is wrong uh yeah uh, you koi opinion hai analysis jaise aap disagree karte hain Uh, opinions and analysis are subject to change uh, because they are inherently opinions so facts are facts opinions are opinions give us a counter opinion in an educated manner in the comment section i'm sure i would i would definitely read it shesh i would probably read that as well and uh, would love to hear your thoughts youtube wale like comment dabayenge ki chumbar ke other logon tak conversation pahunchegi aur platforms wale subscribe karte dabayenge aane wale episodes ka notification milegi niche link hai for stripe for overseas pakistani if they'd like to support us uh, and help us remain independent for as long as possible but anyways this was sayed mazamil hasan zaidi you were watching thought behind things thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one